So I'm going to come right out and say it. I thought Vosh's appearance on Tim Pool was nothing short of inspiring. Genuinely. What Vosh did is Vosh went on Tim Pool. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, um, all right, that's that makes sense. Um, yeah, uh, oh, yeah, fuck, the Audible ads are all over the place. Um, Vosh's appearance on Tim Pool was fantastic, in my opinion, genuinely. Um, the way that it went was he went on Tim Pool, and he very calmly but firmly talked about socialism and talked about class consciousness. And that is about the best thing that you could possibly do on a platform like that. In f yeah, it was ASMR Vosh. People were joking about how it was ASMR Vosh. The problem is we can't do a watch of it. I cannot watch it because Vosh's face cannot appear on here. So we're just going to talk about it. Um, I would love to have watched it, but we can't, unfortunately. Um, what we might do, depending on how I'm feeling, we might watch the Alex Jones um, on Joe Rogan thing because I'm interested to see how that thing went and offer some commentary on it. Um, why, why is he banned? Long story. Um, it involves a bridge. He was on a bridge and he was shooting at somebody and then he said something and yeah. Um, yeah, Alex Jones, I think Alex Jones is technically banned. Okay. So here's the thing. I think Alex, I think Infowars is banned, but Alex Jones himself is not banned. So because Vosh himself is banned, you can't talk about Vo you can't show Vosh on Twitter, on Twitch. But you can do Alex Jones because only Infowars is banned. Yeah. Probably the best debate I've ever seen of Vosh in terms of optics. True, it was a genuine, a genuine optics victory. Unironically. Um and yeah, oh yeah, we could, you know, we could, that would be a fun thing. We could reenact the entire thing, but who are we going to get to play Tim Fool? Wow. Tim Fool. Tim Pool. That was a genuine accident. I did not, I wasn't trying to, uh, just, just shit on, on, uh, Tim Pool. I actually accidentally said Tim Fool. Um, but that's, uh, it's, yeah. Oh yeah. You could do it on YouTube, but I don't really want to switch over to YouTube today. Simply get Abe Lincoln on it. Yeah, that's a good idea. We'll have Abe Lincoln do it. The slip up. <laughs> Whoops. Letting my letting my bias show a little bit. Um, yeah, Tim is getting torn a new one. So having Vosh on has made the right wing absolutely shit their pants. I mean, literally. Like, we could go and show... I could... Like, I think I actually saved one of these. Let me see if I saved it. I think I saved a couple of his tweets of um, Tim Poole just getting absolutely decked by right-wingers because he dared have Vosh on and Vosh did a fucking good job. And so Tim Pool is like, oh yeah, you know who else is canceling? Canceling, I say. Um, you know who else is canceling Tim Pool? Boroshenko. Remember, remember that lady? Remember the lady who did the PragerU video about becoming a Trump supporter from being a Dem? Remember her? The knitting club lady? She's fucking... She's fucking losing her shit over this shit. And it's hilarious. In fact, she's monetizing. She's monetizing her fallout with Tim Pool. It's absolutely hilarious. Let me see if I can find this. Um, he's uh, right here. Let's see. Let's see if I got this. Here we go. Here we go. Where's the, where's the shit? Here we go. Here's, here's Timmy Pool. Here's Caitlin Borshenko. You can call me a whiner. You can call me a snowflake. You can say the left never left you. You can even say, I'm going to book him again. And you'll just be showing that you support his mob harassing people, me, and many others. That says more about you than it does about me. This is Kate Carlin. I always say Caitlin. Uh, this is Karen Borshenko. I love how this is the exact argument for not allowing Alex Jones on Rogan being used to justify why I shouldn't have Vosh on my show. Now I want Alex and Vosh on at the same time just to create cancel culture singularity. <laughs> yes! Fight! Yes! destroy one another <laughs> no but honestly nothing nothing loves i love nothing more than than witnessing when 
we call the rights bluff and they can't motherfucking handle it. They just cannot handle it. See, there was this thing um, for a long time in like, you know, 2015 until relatively recently, there weren't a whole lot of lefty creators online. There weren't a whole lot of people doing left content online. And there certainly weren't a whole lot of uh, debatey types like myself and Vosh and, and all these other people, Riley Grace. There weren't a whole lot of debatey people on the left. So, so what right-wingers would do is they would go, the left will just never show up. And it's because there weren't a whole lot of people actually making that content for a complicated number of reasons. But now that there are, people are calling their bluff. And when they call their bluff and show up in person and the right looks really, really bad, the right has no fucking clue how to handle it. So they just lose their shit in public. They never have had to think about optics in their life before. So there's just people just dogpiling the shit. Every right winger shitting on Tim Pool because Vosh got an opportunity to call the bluff of the right wing. And that, that right there is why at the end of the day, I'm, 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 a, I'm a mauled mama. I'm a debatey bitch. That's why I do the things that I do, because that's what I want to do. I want to call the right on their fucking bullshit grift and reveal them for exactly the type of hateful, spitting, unthinking mob that they are. Yeah. So, let's talk about a little bit. Oh my god, Moon Lord. Okay, what is his actual name? What is Moon Lord's actual name? Is that his, like, actual nickname? Why do they call him that? I don't understand that piece of the lore. Ian. It's Ian, right? Okay, I kept seeing people referencing Ian, and I thought that people were referencing Vosh. Yeah, Moonlord. He's, uh, what's his name? I think I can, let me see. Let me see here. I can get you a picture of him so we can, we can see. Where is he? What's his fucking name? Let me show you. It's, it's this guy. Where is he? Here, this is the guy. Here's a picture of him with Joe Biden. Here, this is him. It's this guy. It's the guy who pops in all the time. Yeah, it's this guy. Yeah, here we go. Oh, you have him. Okay, is this the guy? I don't think this is him. I have a feeling this is going to be something else. Well, yes, this is what he looks like. True. True. Yes. Um, That guy is basically... Okay, let me just let you in on something. That guy, he's like a... Have you ever heard the term... Here, let me just make sure I'm getting the term right. Have you ever heard of the term a toady? Or like a, a, a minion? Or like a crony? That's basically what his job is. His job is to appear on the show and make points slightly in opposition to Tim Pool. And then Tim Pool is really mean and tells him to shut the fuck up. So that Tim Pool looks like the smart guy who's in charge. I do have a Discord, MS Sloth. You can actually access it right from the homepage, um, but I can get you a link right now. Let me give you the link. Whoop. Here's the Discord. We have a very fun Discord. Lots of chat happens on there. There you go. Um, but yeah, it's really funny. Um, to entertain, yes. No, it's not that type of minion. It's not the yellow minions that go blah, 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 and say stupid things. So, well, that's the thing, though. Like, he does make some points. Like, he did make some interesting points. It was really funny. Like, he talked at one point, he talked about how um, he was like, people who are protesting, they just want healthy lives. And, of course, he then, like, trails off into some random shit about obesity. But he brings up things that Tim Pool doesn't think about, and Tim Pool gets really fucking mad at him and tells him to shut the fuck up. I did the voice on stream. Oh, because I was doing the minion thing. That thing. Um, yeah, because somebody was mentioning not that type of minion. Um, yeah, the, the cartoon voice, the, Hell there, spibbity spoo. I didn't do the spibbity spoo, though. That was Fawn. Fawn's over in the other room. There we go. Look at that. There's the Fawn right there. Um, yeah, he's like a stooge. Um, you know, he's there to, uh, make Tim Pool seem smarter and wiser. Um, Tim getting mad at Moonlord. Oh, he got really mad. He got really mad at Moonlord because... He also got mad at his producer, I think, is the producer. The I don't know her name. I've never caught her name. But the the producer lady um, who pops in and um, Lydia. Lydia. Yeah, that's the one. Um, like, 
like she pops in and she was agreeing with Vosh on some things and Tim Pool was getting very angry at that because as it turns out some of the things that Vosh was talking about in there are just simply unequivocally correct yeah they felt like they were derailing him I mean sure it's really funny um, Tim kept kicking L Lydia under the table when he needed her to run a distraction. <laughs> Wait, is that, does that really happen? I mean, there was a couple of times where the whole, um, remember when he was like, get us the sources, get us the sources. He was getting all mad because they couldn't get the sources for some of the claims because they were so outrageous. And then the claims, the, the sources ended up being like info wars. Oh, it was terrible. The fact checking was trash because it's, it's incredibly rare. It's incredibly rare. Um, for Tim Pool to ever actually have someone on his show who challenges his points. And Vosh did a very, very good job at that. Vosh did not get angry, although I can understand why he would have, but he didn't. He kept it cool, but he was very firm and refused to budge when Tim made an outrageous claim. A lot of Tim Tim's guests are also they're sort of yes men and they go uh-huh uh-huh and he pitches them softball questions so that they never have to disagree on something on the air and they might have some sort of faux disagreement where it's like well let me just push back on you a little bit and then they go well yeah yeah that's a good point that's it what Vosh was able to do was say no I can't let you have that I am not letting you push this idea that like all of the American cities are on fire like that's outrageous like you might have a protest where a single building catches fire or a dumpster catches fire, sure. But that's not a city burning down. These are some of America's biggest cities. Hey, Johnny Scarlet, thank you so very much for the raid. Welcome to everyone who's just coming in now. Welcome to the show. We're talking about Vosh and Tim Pool. We're then going to look, we're going to do some react to Tim Pool. And then we're going to talk about Twitter and the perils of using it incorrectly. I know some of my regulars will be mad that I'm talking about Twitter again, but we all need a review every once in a while. Um, yeah. Yeah, and consider coming to the website. Right up there, um, King 5 is doxing protesters. Yeah, um, a lot of news stations do that. Um, it sucks. Um, but consider joining the website. All of you who've just come in, welcome and consider joining the website, demonmama.com forward slash live. We have way more emotes on there. You get to reserve your own username. You can log in with Twitch. It's awesome. Um, and you get to hang out on the screen, which is fun as fuck. So welcome and thank you. Happy to have you. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. What's that? Are you having a stroke or is the sign in the background mirrored? It's mirrored. I have it flipped because I like looking at chat. That's why. I want, uh, when I, it really messed me up. I don't like looking away from chat. It's, it's really silly. But the way it actually is, if I don't mirror my camera, I'm looking away from chat. And it weirds, weirds me the hell out. So I flip my camera so that I can be looking at chat. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll get a, a reprint of this that's backwards so that it's correct. Yeah, no, you're not having a stroke. Don't worry. Well, I mean you might be but it's not because of that. I could put chat on the other side But then it's weird then it's really weird and the thing that happens is I then How does it work? Oh, yeah when I'm flipped then it, it, It's confusing did I get that sign at the Bernie Tacoma rally? No, I got this at a picket that I went to I could green screen my room, but I don't like green screens Um, I don't like the green screens Take a photo of my room and then apply to a green screen? That seems sneaky. Yeah, I went to a, um, so, okay. There was a big Amazon, um, workers organization that happened earlier this year. And, uh, it was organized in part with the Socialist Alternative, which is like a Trotskyist organization here in in Seattle, it was organized in part with the up-and-coming Amazon Workers Union that's trying to organize, and it was organized in part with um, the Seattle C Socialist uh, City Council leader, Kashama Sawant, and they organized a huge thing where we basically surrounded the Amazon headquarters with a fuckload of people. And we all were holding these signs to block it out. And there were cars that were honking. And, like, like it was so loud, the entire city could hear it. Like, crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, it was really cool. Um, yeah. So, 
Is socialist alternative actually good in the US? They're horrible here in Australia. Um, they've done some good things locally here. I can't speak to their entire presence, but they've done some good things here, including getting an actual socialist elected to city council, Kashama Sawant, who's done a lot of great stuff. So yeah, um, yeah, it's, 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 I don't know. I can't speak to their entire organization, but what I can speak to is that here in Seattle, they've had some major success. Um, a lot of that is because of their organizers are actually really involved on the ground and um, know what people are actually dealing with in the area and they have a lot of allies. So that's really good. Um, and I'll say that much. It was an honor to go participate in the event. We, um, yeah, <laughs> wait, I, you I took you into the just chatting section. What do you mean? I'm always in just chatting. I always stream in just chatting. Come on in. Come join our website. Oh, 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 I see, I see. Yeah, no, no, it's good. Just chatting is very welcome. Don't worry. You can be, you can still be a gamer in just chatting. Believe it or not, you can still be a gamer. Yeah, I want to get a shelf. That's probably something that I'll work on this month. I want to get a shelf with all the figurines and toys and stuff that we have and, and all that stuff would be super cool. Um, yeah, well, okay. Anyway. Um, yeah, Im imagine actually engaging in direct action. There are some really incredible, um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, there's actually some really incredible organizations here. Um, and, uh, yeah, they've all, they were all willing to work together. See, there's, there is a time and a place where, um, where leftist unity does occur and where leftist unity does occur and can occur is when you're helping people. That's the way. Um, that's where it does happen. That's where it actually, that's where the real unity is, is that the trots can get along with the anarchists, can get along with the demon mama. We can all work together and help people like literally feed people like quite literally. Um, but yeah, so these are the sorts of things that are growing in popularity. These sorts of organized protests, um, where you have a politician who's pushing people left, who may not be able to be as left as they want to be. Kashama Sawant's not as left as she wants to be, but she is an open socialist and she is on the city council. And so her reach is incredible. And she was able to reach all kinds of leftists in the Seattle area to get together to blockade the fuck out of downtown Seattle. We locked down the entire downtown. Some of you may remember, this was earlier in the year. It was a socially distanced picket. It was incredible. We surrounded the fucking building. All the lanes of traffic were blocked. People were honking and it was so loud that it was fucking overwhelming, like shaking the fucking windows on the lower floors of the Amazon building. There were people walking around the building, patrolling with bikes. We had layers of people. And then this whole crew moves over to go to another area where we went after, uh, we we surrounded and, and, and uh, what's the word? Picketed a, um, a really fucky, evil local landlord, um, who's not local. They're actually a corporation, but they're based here. Um, so yeah. Hey, Susan Turpin. Um, how are you doing? Happy to have you here. Yeah. Nobody did. There were too many of us, Rakasan, and we were explicitly, explicitly peaceful, which that's, that is the way to do it when you're going to pick it. Yeah, it was great. It was um, a super, it was a super amazing experience. There were people playing. There were literally people who climbed out of their cars and sat on top and were fucking playing music and shit. It was really cool. Did I listen to the majority report today? I did not catch it today. I slept in too late. So yeah, I didn't. Hey, that's awesome, Susan Turpin. Well, we're very, very happy to have you. Um, we talk about a lot of cool stuff here and we have a really, really active community. So this is how his t his co-host got the name Moon Lord. All right, let's take a look at it. Let's watch this. Let's find out the lore. We may as well be informed. Let's watch it. Ian Crossland. Collapse, disorder, these bees are dying off by the hundreds of thousands. They're just disappearing. Bees. I think that the bees will die off in 2008 and the human race will die off in 2012 as it's going now. You ignorant fucks! I don't
don't give a fuck what language you speak. I don't give a fuck how much money you have. You're a human. Focus! There are other ways of getting resources. Mine the moon! Ah. Mine the moon! Put a fucking mining colony on the moon! Build a geosynchronous orbital platform above the Earth, attach a space elevator to it, easily, you fucking ignorant fool! Put them there! You fucking put them there! What the fuck is your problem? I am angry! Why are you doing this? We have to move now! What are you trying to accomplish here? Mind the moon. Mind the moon. Why? We are fucked! What are you gonna do with it? Put up the fucking space station, build the elevator, and then do the same thing above the moon. Use a transport! Build the space program! Focus! You know what you're doing? You're spreading hate. This feels like he was trying to do like a Paul Joseph Watson slash Alex Jones kind of thing. Yeah, it could just be Elon Musk's vlog series. You're like fucking Hitler. This is a mess. This is a fucking mess. Now I feel angry. You're inciting anger all over the place. Do you not see people freaking out? People are subscribing to your shit because it's angry. Hmm. I believe that the sun He's a big fan of the shirtless streamers. Wait. That's why the surface of the sun is only 6,000 water. Consi I believe that the sun consists of salt water. Doubt. Doubt. I doubt that. I highly doubt that. Not gonna lie. That's why the surface of the sun is only 6,000 degrees. What a hot take. The True. water, this literal salt water, is reacting with the sun to create is reacting with the electricity to create heat, which is cooling down all the other water and turning it into rock. <laughs> this is about rock? the sun and the way the sun works and the reason that, that people constantly make new uh, realizations about the sun. Because it's made of fucking water. <laughs> I'm gonna play some music. Go national, get national. <laughs> it's national, dude. Amazing crooning. And international on a big scale. Has he been wrong yet? I, I can't tell. <laughs> It's incredible. <laughs> I love the Omega Lol Oz. Oh god, this is wild. Uh oh, Grime Dango, what have you sent me? I don't know. I don't know if this is satire. I I am inclined to think not because he he has takes like these live on the air. I mean, he had takes like these. Oh, true, true. Just do it. A perfect fit. Do it. Just do it! Don't let your dreams be dreams. I didn't Yesterday know how loud this was. I've forgotten. Tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Just put it on the moon! Just put it! Just just fucking make a intergalactic platform that can terraform and mine multiple planets like in the game Astroneer. Free on Xbox Live Game Pass Ultimate. It's easy. You just take the minerals and you plug them into the 3D printer and it pops out as a jet engine that you can take to space and you can stop ruining the planet. I don't know why the bot is so aggressive. I have no idea. Um, I think it's going to be cooled down over time much like the saltwater surface of the moon we will cool down the bot over time anyway so we got a little bit off of off of point as is the case as is the character of demon mama's streams 
Rock? It's made of rock? It's made of Da Vinci? That's what it is. It's made of Da Vinci? That was, he had the same expression as Da Vinci. Um, so, what were we talking about? Yes, Tim Pool. So, uh, Moon Lord, who we now know why he's called Moon Lord, um, Moon Lord, uh, had a lot of things to say throughout the conversation, and very few of them, if any, were in favor of Tim Pool. And this made Tim Pool increasingly angry. Um, yeah, well, not now, Master Debater, just so you know. this The nightlife in Seattle is is definitely paralleled these days. Um, COVID is, is rough. Um, yeah. Um, mind the moon. Should be an emote? Maybe. We'll think about that. Look at all those rats. Look at all those rat views on the screen. I gotta figure out how to get the site emotes to pop up on the screen. I don't know how to do that. Anyway, yes. Thank you, Daedal Dan. Focus. <sighs> I must focus. I must not be distract. The point is, Tim Pool was getting real fucking pissed. Real fucking pissed. Hey, Windleby, happy to see you. And look at that. You have the VIP name. I promised that VIPs from the other chat would get a VIP name. The founders of my original chat have an original have a name. So there you go. You have a special name color. I promised. I delivered. Um. But yeah. So we know Moonlord. Uh, Lydia interrupted a lot of times, and they all had a lot of things to say. And none of them were really the way that Tim Pool wanted it to go. And Tim Pool kept harping on very specific things. He wanted to sell this narrative of America burning to the ground because that's what he's been talking about on his channel a lot. In fact, let me just show you. Like, let me show you how Tim Pool markets his videos. Let me just show you. Because uh, Tim Pool, as it turns out, a lot of his videos As center on him kind of fear-mongering. Veritas has just exposed major voter fraud in Texas. They didn't. They didn't expose shit. Um, Democrats are now losing. Biden camp issues warning. Polls are wrong and Trump might win. Police prepare for mass riots as Trump victory becoming more likely. Tucker drops Biden bombshell, sending Democrats into sheer panic. Another email drop implicates Joe Biden as big tech protects Democrats. Let's go down here. Leftists attack right-wing rallies as Trump supporters rising up. Like, this is... Police receive no charges in Breonna Taylor's death. More riots incoming. Trump official issues warning that armed leftist revolt is coming. This is his this is his thing. So all it took was Vosh going on there and saying, "No, actually that's not the case. Actually actually the the, the entire country is not on fire. The protests have been widely, widely peaceful. And your information that you like to say about everything being violent, violent and everything being everything being a riot is just simply dishonest. And he couldn't handle it because he's not used to being challenged on this stuff. He's not used to being challenged at all. And a lot of the people in his audience aren't used to being challenged on this either. They're used to having tons and tons of people flood in that constantly soothe their ego and soothe their biases and say everything that you currently believe about the world is absolutely true oh my goodness i took a step outside and things aren't on fire are you telling me tim pool is a liar i am unfortunately tim pool loves to over exaggerate things and he kept saying during this conversation with vosh multiple times well you know i was being a little hyperbolic and then vosh is like well you weren't just being a little bit hyperbolic you were being a lot hyperbolic what you're saying here is just not true. And this happened again on the topic of, um, of what was it called? Critical race theory. Vosh said, do you even know what critical race theory is? And Tim Pool literally didn't know. And he turned red on screen. You could watch him turn red on screen because no one has asked him, well, what actually do you actually, do you actually know what critical race theory is? And he just didn't have an answer. 
because all he's been doing is fear-mongering in favor of Trump. What The best moment for me, the best moment for me was at the end when Vosh was like, why won't you just admit that Donald Trump lied to America? We know he did. It's a fact that he did. And both Moon Lord and Lydia, um, uh, both Moon Lord and Lydia, um, like sort of leaned in and said, yeah, why won't you condemn Trump? Why won't you condemn Trump for, for lying? Like you should be able to. And he's like, well, 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 listen, you know, there's no way that Trump could have predicted the future. And that got to be one of the funniest parts of the entire conversation where Tim Poole was just floundering for an hour as, as Vosh was like, well, clearly we know other countries, even though there's no direct parallel between two countries that you can draw, we can see that some things are working and we're not doing those things. And Donald is, Trump is actually doing the op opposite one. He's doing the opposite things that we know to work. And all that Tim Pool could fall back on was these same talking points. Well, Fauci said no masks at one point. Peacecraft. You do not, again, just like with Tim Pool, you do not need to defend Donald Trump in order to acknowledge that a panic could be bad. But Donald Trump did not just downplay for the, for the purpose of no panic. Donald Trump lied explicitly many times and is still lying now. He's going on his, his fucking national campaign trail and he's telling people we've conquered Corona. No, we haven't. It isn't. No, you're doing the thing you're doing this thing where you're willing to to be fooled by a con man. You're being a mark right now, Peacecraft. You really are. You're being a mark. You see, he explicitly lied. He wasn't doing it for panic. He didn't want Wall Street to take a hit. And he didn't want him to look bad. Hence why he's downplayed everything. That's not what he did. He didn't just say, listen, this is going to be a hard time. And we're going to watch. I can do what Trump should have. If, if Trump wanted to downplay panic, here's what he should have done. Everyone, attention Americans, it has come to my attention that a very deadly disease has come onto our country, but guess what? We have the best medical technology in the world, and we are going to get through this together. So, together with the CDC, we are going to work to fight this, and we are going to make sure that every American is protected during this time. So don't worry, don't panic. It is scary. This disease is, de is deadly, just like many other diseases but we will overcome it. There you go. I just did a better job than what Trump did. What Trump did was made made fun of people wearing masks. He explicitly lied about how deadly it was, said, eh, it's just a flu. It's just a flu. You'll be fine. It doesn't hurt anybody. He'll say, you just got to inject bleach into your veins. You just got to use sunlight in your veins. Lie, just lie after lie. And then people like you will lie about what he actually did. Left, left hand stew. My favorite moment was when out of nowhere, Moon Lord just off the cuff describe, describes intergenerational wealth almost perfectly. Yes, that happened. And holy shit was that good for Vosh. That was good for all of us. Anybody on the left who believes in forwarding class consciousness, in making people aware of the fact that intergenerational wealth deeply impacts our world and the equality of our of our society that was a win for us that moment where moon lord came in and gave vosh the assist he did he didn't mean to and he of course he goes off on some random things like he'll go off about like oh the 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 the, the it's, it's you know it's, coronavirus is worse because of obesity obesity is the problem but vosh was able to dunk those down and use the things that moon lord was right about as a launching point where Tim Pool looked like he was being defensive. And he was. Tim Pool was being defensive the entire time. I mean, it could be simp. Could be. Maybe we have a spy on the Tim Pool, but I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah, of course. Well, but that's the thing, right, Marinara? Like, Tim Pool's whole show is set up to give softballs to him and to his and to the right wingers he brings on. Hey, Ruffled Bricks! Welcome to everyone from the ruffled bricks community 
thanks for coming in and uh, happy to have you. Um, thanks for the raid. Really happy to have you all. Consider coming and joining the site. Um, if you join the site, you can come up on the screen. You can sign in on the site with Twitch and you can use all of our awesome emotes. So consider coming on. Obesity is a large issue with coronavirus. If you're already loaded up, overweight with heart disease and strained lungs, I mean, yeah, I don't think that's unreasonable. Well, yes, it is a comorbid morbidity, but that doesn't change the fact that coronavirus is the thing that kills the people. They wouldn't have died otherwise. They catch coronavirus and it complicates with other things, but you have to catch the coronavirus to die from that. And also, then you have to go one step further and go, well, why is America, why does America have such a problem with obesity? And then you find out that we put motherfucking corn syrup in everything, like this drink I'm drinking right now, which I probably shouldn't drink. To be fair, I don't drink a whole lot of them, um, but has fucking corn syrup in it. And corn syrup is insanely calorie dense and you can't dodge that shit. Yeah, high fructose corn syrup. It's outlawed fucking almost everywhere else. I say as I drink some high fructose corn syrup in controlled amounts. Uh, yeah, but that's that's any country. Any country is going to have some comorbidities. But that doesn't mean that the comorbidities are what killed them. That's ridiculous. Stop drinking it? Well, no, I'm going to finish this one because I don't want it to go to waste. I usually drink diet sodas, which aren't great for you, but they don't have high, any high fructose corn syrup in them. So, But once in a while, I treat myself with a little bit of sweetness because life. What are you going to do? Italy chain smokes like a chimney and lives with their grandparents who also smoke. Well, yeah, that's true. Every place. Does an American soda have sugar or sweetener? It has like a, it has like a, a, a sweetener. Yeah. It has like an artificial sweetener. Anyway, the whole point is, the whole point is they had no. Oh my God. JZB. They, do you, I mean, I do, I drink a lot of water. Okay. A comorbidity is something that makes whatever killed you worse. It doesn't, it, you won't die from it by yourself. True. Fish do shit in it, but fish also shit in beer because you have to use water to make beer and it doesn't get the shit particles out. It just kills the germs on the shit particles. So you're still eating the shit. Whoops. There are some shit takes in the Twitch chat right now. Twitch chat should come join my website where they'll have a lot more fun. Beer was invented to disinfect water. I don't know about that. I don't know if it was. I feel like beer was probably invented to get drunk. Let's just be real. You die alongside the comorbidities. That's why it's comorbid. Okay. But you're missing... Wait. You're missing the point. You're missing the point. It's a comorbidity because you catch the disease... And it's worse because of the comorbidity. My God. Oh, my God. Gondim. Um, no. Wait, wait. For real, Gondim? Do you know anything about the war on drugs? You, you do realize... You do realize that the war on drugs was a huge... Um... A, a huge... Wow! Raid number three! Twitch commercial break in progress. Hannah, thank you so very, very much for the raid. Very happy to have you all. We are having an incredible time right now. Very happy to have you. Welcome. We are talking about Vosh and Tim Pool. Then we're going to react to some Tim Pool, um, which I have a small feeling there's going to be some um, debunking involved. Um, and then we're going to talk about Twitter and the perils of Twitter. Thank you all for being here. I hope you'll stick around. We're going to have a good time. I'm also yelling at my chat a lot because apparently a lot of people are having some problems with me saying that just because you have a comorbidity doesn't mean that coronavirus isn't the thing that fucking killed you. Did it black out? Um, I don't know why that would happen. Anyway, welcome and thank you very much to the raid. Consider joining site chat too. If you come on over to my website, it's right here. 
It's right here. The link is right here. You can sign in with Twitch and you can get access to all of our awesome emojis and you'll be up on stream. Up on stream. It's cool as fuck. Just consider coming and hanging out. Anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. The point is, you can't... We're fucked. Trump had the Nelk boys up on stage yesterday at a rally. We lost the college vote that typically goes true blue. Millions upon millions of college kids are going Trump because of Nelk. Who the fuck is Nelk? Who's the Nelk boys? Who are the Nelk boys? What is this shit? Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, MS Loth. I didn't mean to get mad at you. Who are the Who are the Nelk boys? Who are these people? Canadian YouTube channel that does prank videos? Okay. Okay, dude. Yeah, um... Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, it's a new NSYNC. I don't know. They just look like dumb shits. They look like, like, uh, what's that prank guy? The cringy prank guy. I can't remember his name. Cringy prank guy. That guy. Yeah, they're, they're, I don't think so. Yeah, Americans. Yeah, true, Dadel Dan. It's the new K-pop group, Black Nelk? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, there's like 500,000. None of them None of them matter. Here, look, look. Let's just look them up. Do they have a YouTube channel? They have a YouTube channel? Here, all right, fine. Let's find out. You know what? Why not? Let's do some live um, cringe. Trolling Trump supporters at a Trump rally. Surprising people with Takeshi 69. We pranked a Bigfoot expert with a fake Bigfoot. They do have a lot of views, it's true. This video sucks horn. Picking up girls in front of their boyfriends. Ah, it's this style. Buying all our employees $50,000 Rolexes. Drinking fake beer while driving by cops too. Yeah, I've seen enough. I've seen enough. We don't even need to watch any of this. This is just incredibly cringe. Prank calling Apple support. Aggressively vaping in people's faces. Ah, yes. This is the type of content... How long do you guys think you guys are gonna be doing construction here? Cause this is actually my fucking go-to blowy spot. What are you doing? Go smoking class. Follow UCP right now. Oh wait, shit. I am unimpressed. I am very unimpressed. Unimpressed. This sucks. This is boring. This is dumb. Um, yeah, if uh, if this is enough to tip the uh, to tip the election in favor of Trump, well, I'm just gonna say, might be time to form a death cult. Might be might be time to form a death cult of our own. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah, I think, Ace Man. I think you have punked. I think you have pranked me by implying that these people um, matter at all. Jay-Z B, I don't know. I don't know. If you think it's funny, here, let me come up with a similar prank idea. Um, walking up to random people in public and screaming in their faces for no reason. Prank, bro. It's just a, a prank. You've pranked me. I see. I see, Ace Man. I see. I've been pranked. Um, yes, it is time to eat. It is time for us to start believing in the sun being made of salt water. Um, yeah. So, um, not impressed, not impressed, not impressed. Um, appealing to 15 year olds is not the most impressive thing. The thing is, I don't know that that stuff even appeals that much to 15 year olds. Like these types of videos are like high clickbait and they get really high view counts, but do they have any lasting impact? Do people actually care? I don't know. Millions of college followers. Yeah, but so did fucking, so did college humor. 
College humor didn't have any impact on politics. Are you fucking kidding me? They had millions of followers, millions of views. That doesn't mean that they can actually influence political opinion. Millions of dollars. That is sad. What a sad world we live in. Save this for later. The most cringe of, of prank? Oh, boy. All right, I'll save this for later. and We'll take a look at it. I don't know. I, I miss the old prank channels. The prank channels that actually did good pranks. And not just like, we walk up to someone and slap them in the face for funny. Haha. -ha. Alright. <sighs> yeah, does it actually mean you have political influence? No. You know what I miss? P prank patrol? Yeah, just laughs. Or what was the one? Was that the one? Uh, just kidding pranks or whatever. They used to do like DVDs of pranks. And they actually put some love into the pranks. Maybe it was just laughs. Just for laughs. That might be the one. Yeah, it's just stupidity. Listen, it's not a prank. A prank, a prank usually implies actually getting someone, um, like actually getting someone, uh, sort of tricked into something. Not just walking up and going, "Hey, dude, do you mind if I slap you in the nose? Hey, dude, do you mind if I burp in your face? Ha <laughs> ha, prank, bro." To catch a predator was the best surprise prank show of all time. I think you should workshop that one. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, 100% Jay Miles. Totally. Hey, and Lid, happy to have you. Very happy to have you. Consider coming to the site. We would love to have you on here. Um... Antunes is mostly known in leftist space for making far-right comics, but he also has a very cringy animation channel on YouTube. Oh, yes. It's painful. Ugh. Ooh. God, there's so much cringe. There's so much cringe in the world. I can't handle it all. I can't. He has a million subs. Yeah, but that's because, listen, right-wing right -wing subs are the cheapest shit in the world. R are you fucking kidding me? Right-wing boomers will follow anything. I could put a video up on my channel right now that says, Hunter Biden expose, true, wow, you'll never believe it. And then I just do a video where I scream into the mic while the mic is like shaking all over the place like this. And I'm like, yeah, Joe Biden, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden, Burisma, uh, China, and I would get a million followers. I would get a billion followers. I would be huge. But then they would not do anything because they wouldn't watch any of my other videos. They follow the first shit that confirms their biases. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, it doesn't actually mean anything. I mean, I basically, like, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of doing that right now, but, but like, let's be real. Like, I mean, again. Listen. Let me just show you something. Or let me just tell you something, rather. PragerU has an incredible amount of viewers. And nobody knows who those viewers are. Have you ever met anyone who wasn't an 80-year-old person that, do that watches PragerU? Have you ever met anyone? I've never met a single person. I would be willing to bet that, like, half of their views are accounts that are owned by the Koch brothers. They're just, there's no, there's no organic nature to these things. Wasn't that amazing, Marinara? That video is so fucking good. I, I think we're going to watch it on stream sometime. My dad is 67 and watches PragerU. There you go. You found the one person under the age of 80 who watches PragerU. There you go. You did it. It was blown away. Yeah, it's fucking fantastic. In Search of a Flat Earth is an, a fantastic documentary. It is. I, I think it, it deserves being called a do documentary. Thanks for the follow, Lynn the Cobatroid. Happy to have you. Thanks for the follow, Toastface. Prager you. Poor people hate God and bad Christians. Yeah, basically. Yep, that's pretty accurate Sponsor. summation of Prager you. Prager you is just an endless stream. Guys, we covered Prager you the other day, and Prager you, unironically, they cited their own video in the sources of one of their videos. I'm not kidding you. One of their citations was their own video. No, that doesn't count, Lynn, because see, that's not actually, you're hate watching and you're not actually being influenced by them. Have you seen Balls of Steel with the Annoying Devil? It's painting curse words on kids' heads and giving away free and 
umbrellas with insults on top. No, I haven't. PragerU does make for good YouTube poops. That's true. That's true. It's interesting that Nelk has enough pull to be pulled, on, invited onto Marine One and on stage. No, that shows desperation. Donald Trump is desperate. Like, I, I hope you under, like, let's just take a look. Let's just real quick, just real quick. Look, look, let's just, let's just take a look right now. Donald Trump is very desperate. Do you realize that his chances are so low right now of winning? It would basically take a miracle at this point or unbelievable, unbelievable voter suppression. Donald Trump is getting fucking creamed and he's desperate. So yeah, of course he's going to invite every fucking, every fucking cringe YouTuber that you can imagine. Every single, uh, uh, prank boy, every single Elsa Spider-Man, whatever YouTuber that he possibly can. They're desperate. Chris Cuomo disagrees and he hates Trump more than anyone. Well, guess what? Hating Trump isn't what determines whether you're correct. We have a lot of info. What chances did 538 give Trump in 2016? We could actually look that up. Here we go. 30%. 30% was their chances that they had him at. Their chances now, 11%. 30 versus 11. And keep in mind, Trump got creamed in the popular uh, in the popular vote. He won a few key swing states which he is not uh he is not uh adjusted or sorry, which he has not won this time around. Yeah, he's the sitting president. Yeah, the, and the polls have been improved since 2016. I mean, the thing is, I'm not saying that there's no chance. Listen, listen, listen. I'm not saying there's no chance. What I'm saying is there's an 11% chance. And Donald Trump's team has these numbers. That's why they're inviting irrelevant TikTok prank bros onto, the, onto Marine One. They're desperate. They're desperate. The polls weren't the problem. It was pundits that was the problem. The polls aren't the fucking problem. You're good. You're good. Lynn the Cobatroid. It's li it's oh li Lijin like Lijin. Oh oh okay. Lijin. Oh sorry. Yeah, I see so many names. I inevitably will mispronounce some of them. Thank you for the correction, Lijin. I'll try to keep that straight. I didn't even see the the uh, J. Yeah. Also, the Senate chances are looking pretty fucking good. Where's the Where's the Senate stuff? That's back on the main page. All right. Let's so. Yeah. Senate forecast. Oof. What's the Senate gonna look like after? They have a chart of it, don't they? Where's the chart? Is this the one? Yeah, here we go. In 23, uh, 23 and 100 scenarios, Republicans win control. 77 out of 100 tested scenarios, Democrats win control. <laughs> yeah, Ariel Scarcella is a goof. What a joke. Yeah, this is not looking good for them. Guess what? Neither is the House. There are is a 2% chance that the, the Republicans are able to win control of the House. In reality, the Democrats are going to control the House, the Senate, and possibly the White House. Yeah. Well, thanks, Lijin. Religion. Wait, did I do it wrong again? Lijin? Lijin. Lijin. Okay, I did it right. I got it this time. I fucking got it. Republicans winning the House, right? I know. 2% chance. So it's not impossible. It's not impossible that Donald Trump pulls off some random bullshit. But it's not looking good. And they know this too. The Trump team has access to the same polling data 
whether they talk about it publicly or not, they have access to the same data. There's a reason why Donald Trump will only talk about like OANN polls and why he was, was, was uh, fucking begging for Twitter polls in favor of himself. Trump does not have a very good chance right now. And he's desperate. They're all desperate. Republicans might have a shot at the House, but not for another six years. Yes, true. That's true. Um, yeah. I would love to see... I mean, we all know our Ariel Scarcella is just an unbelievable grifter. Just an unbelievable grifter. Isn't random bullshit his PhD? Um, yeah. But, um, provided we have an honest election, the chance of Trump winning is, like, nothing. It's, like really low. It's very low, like a 10%. Still not very good. It's still a one, rolling a one on a D10, but it's not very good. And they don't like those odds. Would like, think about it this way. If you were in Trump's position and you knew you roll a dice and nine out of 10 times, you're going to lose. Well, here's the thing too, but I don't even know if he can win with a dishonest election. He's like, the American people hate Donald Trump right now. It, I don't even know if what he's done is going to be able to overcome the amount of hatred the American people have for Donald Trump at this point. Yeah. Yeah, voter suppression is always going to be spicy, but as we can see, there is a lot of people driven to go out and actually vote. And if he gets voted out, also interested to see his plan to sit in the house if he gets voted out. I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of scenarios that can still happen. They're still pushing for the red mirage thing, but people have done a good job talking about it. I'll, either way it goes, I, I hope we all just calm down. That is not going to happen. Will I be streaming the election? Yes, I will be streaming the election. So get ready to have a fun night. We'll do whatever we got to do to keep ourselves awake and having fun. Maybe we'll watch random cringe videos. Whatever. I know, right? Four days. Ah, I don't even want to think about it. Wait, is it only four? Shit, it is. Fuck. It's all right. We'll figure it out. Demon, I hope you're right, but I think you're wrong. I think Trump wins, and I'll be on your channel after the election. Hopefully, you can tell me I told you so. Listen, I am never said that Trump is not does, has no chance, but it's not looking good for him. Like, I don't understand. Like... I don't know. Joe Rogan with Kyle Kalinske and Alex Jones at the same time is going to be one for the books. Oh shit. That's a lot of competition, but that's going to be unhinged and you can come hang out with me and have a good time instead of a bad time. Um, almost want to take the avoid the day off from work to avoid any awkwardness of being the lone left dude in a rather conservative workplace. You know, I'm not going to lie. That sounds like a good idea. I would not want to be the only left person surrounded by right wing people on the day that there's a very good chance that Donald Trump loses and then they lose their absolute shit. You know, I've had friends calling me and saying my parents think that coronavirus and the lockdowns are going to be gone when Trump wins, just gone. There are like eight lovely streamers. Fair enough. I just hope that I can win your heart. And we'll see. I'll do the best coverage I can. We'll have as much fun as we possibly can. I know there's going to be a lot of streaming. Maybe it'll just be a small, cozy stream. Maybe no one will come. But if you do, I'll do my best to give you a good time. So that's my that's the demon mama scuffed ass promise that I can give you. I'll do my best to let us have a good time as best as we can on election night. <sighs> wow, we got way off topic, but that's okay. That's what you're here for. We like talking about random shit that has to do with politics. Anyway, point is, the desperation that Trump is feeling right now leaked even through his mouthpiece, Tim Pool. Um, oh, cool. Well, I'll be happy if you stop by, Enlid. Uh, I understand there's a lot of competition and I don't hold anyone um, accountable. I don't hold anyone in um, bad standing if you... Go watch something else, obviously. <laughs> Wasn't Trump trying to declare that COVID is over? Yeah, no, he said that we conquered COVID. Yeah, it's ridiculous. He has a cult of old people who are vulnerable to COVID who believe that it will literally disappear. Do you think there's any actual validity towards the whole Biden scandal stuff? Mm, not really. Not really. 
<laughs> Listen, all I'm going to say is w tuning in to a couple of conservative streamers if Donald Trump loses the election on election night is going to be one of the wildest experiences you can ever you will ever see in your life. In fact, we might just do a a, a dirty little check-in on stream on some of our favorite conservatives and just see how their mental state is doing if Donald Trump uh, gets wrecked. But there is the possibility of the red mirage. It is possible that because of mail-in delays, because of voter suppression, that the count, the vote count on election night will be in slightly in favor of Trump and they'll use that to declare victory and blah, blah, blah. I have seen conservatives try to claim that Hunter Biden is a statutory rapist. Oh, that just sounds like conspiracy bullshit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I'll be, I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be tuning in on some of our favorite Republican uh, right-wing streamers just to see what their reactions are because, ooh, that's going to be fun. But, but again, we have to wait and see what's going to happen. You never know. Wait, wait, Deli, why are you getting so many fucking ads? Why are y'all getting so many ads? That's so weird. Oh, it's because of those new mid-rolls that they put in. Um, I think, listen, I, I can't, I can't, uh, consider consulting the Discord. I believe, um, the Discord may be able to soothe your emotions about the ads. I'm hearing that the only two battle only two battleground states that will report by 12 a.m. EST will be Florida and North Carolina. Well, that's possible. Can we do Crowder? Yeah. Oh, we'll check in on Crowder. You can bet if if Trump loses on election night and it's like a landslide, oh, you better bet. We're going to spend a couple hours hopping in and just checking on the reactions of all of these fucking right-wing nut jobs. They're probably going to be screaming like, we, we need to get our guns and go. We! I wonder how many of them are just going to break QAnon overnight. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, Shubidu. I can't control the ads on the site, unfortunately. I can't control ads at all on the site. It's Twitch's side. Same thing as with YouTube. Um, Twitch runs ads all the time. I don't know why. In fact, I don't even know if I can turn down... I don't even think I have control over that. Let me check my dashboard real quick. I don't think I can even adjust that those anymore. Let's see. I don't even know where those are. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I can't even touch them. I, I can't touch the mid-roll mid ones. Yeah, it sucks. I don't know why it's happening. Twitch ad break with a countdown. Yeah, that's Twitch. See, that's Twitch's thing. They added that and it sucks. Majority. Wait, wait. Taylorfish, thank you very much for the follow. Georgia won't be decided until January though. And that may be the majority swing. January? Why? Wait, why would it be January? I don't know about that. I, I don't know about the details of how long certain ones. January? I don't think it's that long. Oh, I agree, Lijin. I agree. 100%. It's ridiculous. But there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah, there's nothing we can do about it, unfortunately. Twitch decided to add mid-roll ads, and there's nothing... I have no control over that, besides moving to a different platform. And that would be very bad for me right now. Because if I was to stream on YouTube, I wouldn't be able to get raids... I don't have as many followers on my YouTube because it's just the way it is. I have way more followers on this website than I do on uh, on you than I do on YouTube. It's just maybe someday, but oh, they are. Yeah, and I wish there was more I could do about that, but there's not. Um, yeah, I I'm sorry. I hate them too. It's just a reality of the platforms we're stuck working on. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they they constantly change shit. It is cringe. I agree improvise adapt overcome we'll figure out a way um true so yeah um to sort of put the the final thoughts on the whole uh uh vosh and tim pool discussion i think that um i think that vosh did fantastically well on tim pool i i genuinely want to learn from it personally 
because if I ever get the opportunity to go on a big right-wing channel, I want to do something like that. My own style, but I want to do something like that. I want to be able to deliver a message, seeds of knowledge to the audience without getting lost in how much I dislike the host because that was good. But the other key point is that Vosh didn't just go easy mode. He still provided a challenge to Tim Pool. He just kept himself very calm and knew exactly what he wanted to say and he knows his shit. So at the end of the day, huge points in Vosh's favor. Very, very happy with it. Um, oh, Lonely Danbo. Maybe it does. I don't think, I don't know that it does. I'm not partnered. Believe it or not, I'm not a partner. I am just an affiliate. Though that might change. Uh, I've been getting so many views lately from all of you wonderful viewers that I might become a partner at some point. And that would be pretty fucking cool. That would be pretty amazing. I would love that. That would boost me up in the algorithm. We can keep growing. I really, really, really want to keep growing this channel and doing cool shit. Yeah, I'll be a partner. Pew, 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 pew. Oh, other side. I've heard other side is really good. I actually want to play it um at some point but i haven't yet yeah the site has been a great a great choice yeah um partnership is 75 average and you know what we haven't done this in a while let's take a small break before we do more tim pool stuff and do a little bit of indulgent uh indulgent shit let's just take a look at, at our at our at our growth together over the last 14 days we are up to 58 average viewers we're up to I've streamed 45 hours in the last 14 days, which is incredible. That is an, a, a lot of streaming, and it actually stuns me how many hours I've actually been on this camera. We are up 4,000 views gained. Look at this line. Look at these lines. Look at these graphs. Boop. Boop. Look at it all. You all, this is you guys. You guys are doing this. Obviously, I'm streaming, but you all are the ones making these lines go up. These are my live views. Just straight up it's fucking cool it's amazing and it makes me really happy because uh it feels good to know that there are people who like to watch my sh my stuff and it gives me inspiration every day to come on here and make you all smile and laugh and mauled and whatever else i do so yeah no one can can give bits or subscribe. I was always suspect of Twitch Prime subs. If the product is free, you are the product. Well, that's true. That is true. Yeah. Oh, and Clipchimp. Yes. Absolutely. Um, it's really, really hard though. Um, if I was to if I was to de partner, if I was to de affiliate right now, I would be making no money from this stream. None. And I don't really make a lot from this stream right now. Um, like, like. I'm trying to think. Let's see if I can even get my stats up here. I don't know if I'm allowed to share Twitch stuff, but I can tell you, like, the amount of money that I pull in from this is, unfortunately, like, it's not, like, a, a job. Like, it's not a job yet. It's not to that point, um, unfortunately. Let's see. Where's my, where's my info? Here, I can, I can look at this. Yeah. So, slow and sure. We're growing. Well, hey, Paul the Potato, we're happy as fuck to have you. Um, and Hannah has brought a lot of attention over here, and we seem to have uh, a, a a lot of overlap as far as what Hannah's audience like and what my audience like and what I do and what Hannah does. So there's some similarities there and synergy, so I'm very happy about that. Um, hey, Atona no Aji. Um, yeah. The product isn't for you, pay for him, just keep that yet there. Because it's not a job yet, with persistence drops the not yet. Yes, that's true. Have a great day, Atona no Aji. Happy to have you today while you could. Maybe you'll be back later. If not, have a wonderful day. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not, like, I do a lot of work for this. But I, I recognize that, like, streaming is something you have to put a lot of investment in up front. You have to put, like, the... I'm going to be doing this for a while before I can make a proper living off it, before I can actually pay anything bills right now. Basically, all of the money I get from this stream goes back into the stream with very few exceptions. Occasionally, I will buy like food or something like that um, with the food that with the money that I get from this. But um, other than that, I just put it right back into the, I just invest it right back into the show. 
whether it's through buying equipment, buying stuff to actually put up on the walls and whatever so that the backdrop's nice, whether it's paying people for stuff that I get from them, like thumbnails or whatever, which I don't have that much to, to pay. So, but someday, someday, and we'll get there. So de-affiliating, the point of this is de-affiliating is really not an option for me right now. Maybe someday, but I can't do it right now. It would, it would just mean that it would just hurt me at this point, unfortunately. All right. So now that we've talked about Vosh and Tim Pool, we've talked about the channel a little bit. Um, and now, yes, that's true. I, I have, and I will pay you again the, when I make more money. That's how it goes. I need a PO box. Yeah, that's true. I should get a PO box. That's a really good idea. But see, that's another expense though. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a, there's just, there's a lot of expenses that go into this. If my phone ever dies, like that's going to be hard for me. You know what I mean? Uh, if my computer has an issue, that's going to be really difficult for me to overcome. So I want to keep growing, which means for now we got to deal with, uh, oh, that's true. That's true. Grime Dango. You could do that. Is it Twitter time? Not yet. Twitter time is after Tim pool. We're doing Tim pool first. Um, you do fix the phone. That's true. You da fixy. Um, yeah, I, I'm really happy about that. Like I went and hung out in Hannah's chat the other day and I had a fucking great ass time. It was fucking awesome. Hannah has a really awesome community. So, yeah, it's great. Um, and we're just hoping to grow. We want to keep going up. I want to keep doing more. I have a lot of ambition for this channel. I want us to be able to do some serious fucking advocacy, some serious political education. I want us to be able to talk about cool media, play games together. In the future, I want to do playthroughs where I do political commentary on games while we play through them. Um, and then like, we can have a big talk about it afterwards. I want to do history stuff like I did with battle of Blair mountain, which was fun as fuck. Um, yeah, I really like Hannah and Jake. I, I, I was on a panel with Jake a few weeks ago and it was awesome. It was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. The YouTube's fun too. Um, on my YouTube, I post a lot of the debate content that I do though. Debate content is, is, um, is, is going down a little bit lately. A lot of the, um, debate panels are retiring but some new ones are popping up um the hippy dippy is over chud night is over um yeah i know seglin yeah i know we're doing really good a lot of that is thanks to hannah so yeah um yeah debate channel go down but stocky go up maybe um yeah a lot of the debate shows are going um are going to, are like they're retiring for now uh, hippy dip. Yep. This Friday is hippy dippy's last, um, is uh hippy dippy's last one. Why call them over and not just do them until you get popped by Twitch? Well, because, um, to be honest, a lot of people are really burnt out. It's a lot of work. This Friday is hippy dippy's last show, um, for the near future. I think that there's going to be some other stuff in the future, but yeah, prime isn't going to prime show is going like prime seems to love the panel scene and that's great. Because I like going on Prime Show. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But he was also... But keep in mind that Prime was also the most recent one to start. Prime Show is the youngest show. Chud Knight's been going for all for a year. Um, and Hippy Dippy has been going for almost a year every Friday night. And these panel shows are an incredible amount of work. Like, organizing panel shows is really, really hard. So yeah. Um yeah, I hope I hope Prime keeps growing because I really like going on his show. This is Janitor, and Janitor is home and healthy, and this ma and this makes money sad. Now see, this is teacher, teacher very sick. This make money happy money. I say, oh, now I can make waffle houses. Mom Sequitur was my favorite years ago. They blew up. I don't know them. Interesting. Non sequitur. Non sequitur? I don't know non sequitur, I don't think. Yeah, I don't really know them. I've heard the name, but I don't know them. Um, Prime is a closet capitalist and that makes me happy inside. I don't think so. I don't think so. I just think that Prime is very good at, at navigating Twitch's systems and networking. He's very good at that. That doesn't mean he's a closet capitalist. In fact, I don't know about that. No, you're good, Grime Dango. Those videos are great. Um, 
Gayfesh, I think Dylan is getting really burnt out. He got kind of he got way doomer after the TOS change. Well, yeah, it impacted his co his content a lot. There's a lot of stuff he has to be very careful around. I don't. Uh, he also is dealing with a lot in his um, life right now. Like, I mean, his cat died and he had a breakup. That's a lot to deal with. And he's been working. Like, keep in mind. And this is just me. You know, I really like Dylan. I really get along with Dylan. I've made a lot of content with um with Dylan. Dylan is one of the hardest working people I've ever fucking met on this platform. Dylan is constantly working. Like, constantly. He's constantly doing IRL politics. He's constantly working on streams. He's constantly organizing new content. So, yeah. Um, the TOS change was not entirely a nothing burger. Um, it, some of it was really bad, and some of it isn't. We... Uh, we have to be very careful about certain things. Certain types of panels can't happen anymore, and that's why you don't see them anymore. Um, yeah. Yeah, Dylan was... Yeah, Dylan... Well, yeah, that that's fine. I mean, I can understand that. Dylan was the one who originally, like, boosted Prime up. But Prime runs a lot of panels. Like, a lot. And he has a lot of help with that. So, anyway, it's fine. He was talking with RGR last night. He's shockingly hardworking. Yes, it's true. He is shockingly hardworking. Um, burnout is something that happens all the fucking time in streaming spaces all the time burnout is incredibly difficult to stave off um and you know i believe that people that we should celebrate it we should be okay when people take a break from certain types of strenuous content because if you want your creators to keep making stuff um you as a viewer are incentivized to be okay with them taking time off did i see the bad bunny drama yes we're probably going to talk about that during the Twitter section. Yes. Anyway, without any further ado, let's do some Tim Pool reacting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's only 19. Yeah, that's true. Peacecraft, you can find it yourself. I burn out over a bad night's sleep. That's fair. I don't know if that's really, uh, like, I don't know if that, I think that's more just being tired. Burnout is like when you burnout specifically tends to refer to like when you can't even muster the energy to make something that you work on i don't know maybe it is yeah peacecraft is hiding from site chat for some reason i don't know yeah that's a joke yeah but i mean i understand it the feelings that are like that can absolutely happen there have been days where i've gotten a bad night's sleep and it's just been so hard to fucking um to just fucking make stuff the next day um but yeah i've had i've had like writing burnout to the point where i just can't write anymore yeah you're just playing wow and bouncing around yeah 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 it's all right it's all right i know you're you're hiding from the from the site chat i get it even if you get too much sleep yeah that's true that can happen yep all right let's do some tim pool let's see Here we go. We're reacting to Tim Pool vids. Let's do it. Oh, has she blocked everyone? Oh, that's unfortunate. Bad Bunny? Really? Ah, not me. Not me. I'm, I'm in the safe zone. Look at that. Hmm. Well... We'll talk about this a bit more. We'll talk about this a bit more later. You got blocked at like 9 a.m. that day. Oof. Well, I'm sure we're gonna have. Uh, I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of discussions about it. So, poo poo pool. Yeah, that happened. Um, yeah. What did she do? We'll talk about that. But first, let's do Tim Pool. Let's let's save the Twitter stuff for the Twitter section, okay? Let's save the Twitter stuff for the Twitter section. Let's chill. Let's chill. Let's chill. Let's wait. Let's wait on the drama, okay? Can we do that? Can we wait on the drama until after the Tim Pool? No, no. Don't be sorry. I'm just trying to... <sighs> brain power. I'm using my brain power right now to focus. To focus the energies of all of us into Tim Pool. Let's do it. All right. 
So we're going to watch some Tim Pool. Oh, God. He did a video. He did a video on Glenn Greenwald already. Uh, do I want to watch that? Oh, my God. All right, let's, let's read this thing. Let's watch this one. This looks good. Kamala has now been implicated as Biden scandal is at historic levels. All throughout this past week, we have watched the slow rolling of the Biden family scandal. Why has he got to be over just there? Emails, then the laptop, then photos, then a report to the Delaware police. All of this, remember, 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 all of this is based off of a laptop that was provided by Rudy Giuliani. By Rudy Giuliani. Okay, so I need to move the chat box so that we can see Tim Fool's... Why do I keep doing that? I, I promise you I'm not doing that intentionally. I promise you I'm not doing it intentionally. Oh my God. How do I do this? I need to flip this thing. Give me a second. Give me a second. We're going to have to do something silly. God damn it. How do I flip this shit? Oh, that's why I got to do this. Then we got to transform fucking rotate 180 degrees. Bam. There we go. Look at that chat over on the right side. Now, here we go. Actually for endangering children. This has been hmm. a strategic I don't know why the command is publishing these documents or at least giving them out well, to look journalists. At who then publish them. As I warned early on, the information they're releasing is just the tip of the iceberg. In most strategies for maximum yeah, the guy from impact, the Borat movie. they're going to slow roll out the information. And now we're at a point where it has reached historic proportions. Initially, Joe Biden was accused of using his office to make money. Let's see if I can do it. And his son was his intermediary. Hunter Biden was placed on the board of Burisma, receiving fifty to $83,000 per month for what? the family name. Now, Joe Biden said that he has nothing know. to do with this. Weird. He doesn't talk to his son about foreign business dealings, and he is completely innocent. These are just baseless smears. And now, which w the, yeah, the thing that's elevating that this to a level of historic proportions, a former partner, a man named Tony Bobulinski, has come out blowing the whistle saying Joe Biden does and did talk with his son about foreign business dealings. It was not just Hunter Biden. Apparently, Joe Biden signed off and advised on these deals because it was the Biden family name. And in fact. OK, so. Um, oh, that's fine, Paul. Damn, that's awesome. Hell yeah. You're a good worker. Good shit. Yeah. So again, Fox News. Remember, Tim Poole sells himself as a centrist. Here's him basing an entire article off of word for word, no challenge what Fox News is saying. Just re, just re-reporting this. Harris, prominent Democrats listed as key contacts for Biden family bin business venture projects. Emails unrelated to the laptop or hard drive purportedly belonging to Hunter Biden. Well, let's take a look in. Let's just find out. Let's find out where is his fucking sources. Does he have them? Ah, uh, no, he doesn't. Let's look up this story. Let's just look it up. Listed as key contacts. Let's find it. Here we go. Let's find this article. Let's take a look. Emails unrelated to the laptop or hard drive purportedly belonging to Hunter Biden. So keep in mind the hard drive and laptop has not even been confirmed. Excuse me. Has not even been confirmed to belong to Hunter Biden. They're just running with it. They're just running with it. Exclusive. Hey, wow, everyone's being so generous today. Zanzi, thank you so very much for the raid. Welcome to everyone from Zanzi's community. We are just now diving into talking about the amazing and interesting Dim fool. I mean, Tim Pool. That one I did on intentionally. Tim Pool. We're going to learn about what it is that Tim Pool actually talks about because Tim Pool took a lot of offense in his conversation with Vosh a couple days ago. What we just talked about. Um, hey, look at all those. Look at all those frogs. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, he 
Tim Pool took a lot of offense to being called a right wing blogger, vlogger, whatever he is, podcaster. Um, but he really is. He really, really is. Hey, Coco, good to see you. Frogs. Those are from the Twitch chat. Zanzi just raided in, and Zanzi has a frog emote that's very, very cute. Let's continue. A list of key get domestic contacts for a joint venture involving Jim and Hunter Biden and now bankrupt CEFC China Energy Co. included former Vice President Joe Biden's current running mate, Senator Kamala Harris, among other prominent Democrats, Fox News has learned. An email exclusively obtained by Fox News with the subject Phase 1 Domestic Contacts Projects and dated May 15, 2017, Biden's brother, Jim Biden, shared a list of key domestic contacts for Phase 1 target projects. What the fuck? This is the biggest nothing burger ever. They have one random email from Biden's brother, uh, purportedly from Biden's brother, that talks about contacts or projects for phase one domestic, like what the fuck? The email is unrelated to the laptop or hard drive. Read the email here. What the fuck is this shit? This is just a random fucking email. Holy shit. Yeah, Vosh did great, Coco. We were just talking about that. Now we're actually... Now what we're doing is we're reviewing... Um... Um... We are reviewing some Tim Pool content. You know, because... Tim Pool's been in the in the in the buzz lately, thanks to Vosh going on there. So we're gonna talk about some 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 Tim Pool stuff. I feel like it's important. The emails have only ever been provided as PDFs, not the original stripped of headers, so there's no way to prove the origin. Of course there's not. These fuckers. This is completely irrelevant. Yeah, oh he does. He does that all the time. Okay. It's unclear if any of the Democrats were ever contacted about the target projects. Uh oh. So not only, not only is this a giant nothing burger to begin with, there is no evidence that any of them were ever actually contacted. The t the email was sent from Jim to Hunter Biden, Tony Blobulinski, Rob Walker, and James Giller. This is this is RussiaGate, except more unhinged and more bullshit. Blobulinski, Bobby Blobulinski, I don't know, whatever. What his name is? Bob Bobulinski, Tony Bobulinski, whatever. B Blobulinski? Blobulinski? That's all I have to say. This email includes a note that Hunter has some office expectations he will elaborate. A proposed equity split references 20 for H and 10 held by H for the big guy with no further details. What does this even mean? This is literal nonsense. There's no context for any of this. This is what passes as reporting at Fox News. This is, this is like QAnon tier bullshit. I just saw behind the Biden curtain and I grew concerned with what I saw, he said. The family, the Biden family aggressively leveraged the Biden family name to make millions of dollars from foreign entities, even though some were from communist controlled China. Okay, Blobulinski. This is like, this is ridiculous. This is so nothing. All right. So remember, that is what Tim Pool is going to be ranting about here. So let's, let's just keep. According let's keep... to this former business partner who's on the emails himself. The Bidens made millions from the Chinese behind his back, which brings me to the next big breaking. I'm sorry. Can we repeat that again? Hunter Biden. Apparently, Joe Biden signed off and advised on these deals because it was the Biden family name. And in fact, according to this former business partner who's on the emails himself. Yeah, it does. Biden's made millions from the Chinese behind his back. Remember, 
None of the people who were on this list, they were unable to prove that any of them were even contacted. Fox News admitted to that. Fox News admitted to that. Unbelievable. Which brings me to the next big breaking revelation. Kamala Harris, prominent Democrats listed as key contacts for Biden family business venture projects. They are listed in these business dealings. Now, so keep in mind, we just read this. Now we're going to hear what Tim Pool says about the article that we just read together on stream. So you know what it says. And let's see if Tim Pool presents it honestly. Does it mean much? It just means they may have been involved and we don't know to what level in, of involvement. But I will warn you again, we are facing a slow roll. The media needs to be embarrassed a beyond slow our recognition. Roll? The way I described it. The media needs to be embarrassed. The media needs to be embarrassed, he says, citing Fox News for his entire, entire video. I don't know. Point, it's, it, it sounds like he picked a random word and is trying to make it sound scary. Our media in this country has negative credibility. If they say something, I just assume the opposite is true. You're citing Fox News, the biggest media corporation in the United States. Are you fucking kidding me? Early on, Big Tech censored this story. Now, one of the <laughs> biggest... Early on, what are you even talking about? This is conspiracy nonsense. Biggest political scandals, at least in my opinion, in U.S. history. A, a form One of the biggest political scandals in United States history. This is what Tim Pool does. Tim Pool's channel is a constant screaming hyperbole fe fest. Former vice president, to what extent he was using his office to enrich his family. He's been accused of it before. And big tech covered it up and the media covered it up. And I kid you not, we got a statement from the media NPR covered saying, it up. We don't care about non stories. We won't cover this. And then yes. Yes, that's what news organizations do. News organizations have a responsibility. Journalists, actual journalists have a responsibility to not report things that are not newsworthy. A random easily fakeable email that supposedly says that Biden maybe somehow emailed a bunch of Democrats about maybe a business that might happen, but there's no proof of that is not newsworthy. It's not newsworthy. What are you talking about? That is what makes this scandal historic. It's not just about Joe Biden. It's about the cover up, the censorship and how our media keep in mind this entire rant, this entire rant is based off of just reading the headline. We have literally read more of the article than Tim Pool has at this point. Has failed in every possible respect. Maybe this would all just blow over. Maybe it just made Joe Biden look bad. But the, the, the level to which we are Every seeing time. the media assist the Democrats in this one is shocking. Donald Trump recently leaked the contents of a 60 Minutes interview, which only lasted about 45. Maybe we should watch that. And in it, Leslie Stahl says, we can't verify the laptop and outright lie because they've already verified the laptop. The FBI's got it. The, the, the contents were forwarded to the police. The FBI isn't, isn't 60 Minutes. If 60 Minutes can't verify the veracity of the claims about the laptop, they're not the FBI. He can't even keep his story straight. And a whistleblower, former partner, has confirmed. Oh, yes. Of course they do. Yes. You know what? Watch this. Let me show you something. Watch this. Ready? This is a good point. So here's the thing. Uh, let me just show you. Cryptosporidium457 says, right-wingers have an obsession with cover-ups, especially ones that involve the supernatural. Watch this. Here we go. Let me just show you. We've talked about this many times. Umberto Echoes, 14 points. Let's take a look right here. Number seven, the obsession with a plot. 
Thus, at the root of the Ur-Fascist psychology, there is an obsession with a plot, possibly an international one. The followers must feel besieged. Bing! There you have it. There you have it. Listen, we don't we don't do the uh, we don't do the uh, fucking standing shit in chat here. Your, my chat is not a place for you to come in and drop dumb political ads. If you have something meaningful to say, go for it. Yikes! Forbes reported that Carlson's October twenty seven interview with Bob Ulinsky was the highest rated non debate telecast of the year from Tony Bob Ulinsky, Hunter Biden in China, an explainer on Politifact. That's wild. That's wild. But there you go. They're just, but keep in mind, that's a very partisan audience that's being attracted to this. This is just Hillary's emails 2.0. And no one, no one outside of the most frothing Trump supporters gives a shit or can figure out any of this shit. Any of it. Some of these contents. So maybe you don't know where the laptop came from. Yeah. Sure, fine. Yeah, yeah, Coco. But I think it's shocking. The lack of curiosity, the active wait, cover- Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Has confirmed some of these contents. So maybe you don't know where the laptop came from. Sure, fine. But I think it's shocking. The lack of curiosity, the active cover-up, the censorship from big tech, the desperate attempt to hide this makes this one of the biggest scams. No citations on any of these massive claims. Not a single citation on any of these massive claims. The giant cover-up by big tech in cooperation with the FBI, in cooperation with CNN, in cooperation with Joe Biden. Obsession with a plot. ...in our history. Let me read you this story first and tell you, tell you what's going on with Harris possibly being Dude, involved. Dude, you've already we poisoned the well. You've spent four minutes ranting about how this is the biggest, the biggest scandal in history before you even read people the article. Holy shit. Thank you, Primo Tugboat. I love Head it, too. Head over to timcast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There are many ways you can do it. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, all right. And I that it is being released just before the election, in my personal See opinion. See you, G. It have is a good being night. used to manipulate the election to help Donald Trump. I don't know by who or why, but of course, that's probably the case. Still not talking about the article. For us, we don't have the luxury of ignoring this pertinent information, and we need to get to the bottom of it. If that hurts Joe Biden, well, then so be it. The media cover-up, the big tech cover-up is horrifying. That's why you should share this video. The media won't report it. I should say, for the most The media won't report it, he says, as Fox News, the biggest media company in the United States, is reporting about it, and he's literally citing their reporting of this event in order to push his bullshit. Part. There are some people who are actually doing their jobs. And big tech is actively censoring it. As of right now, the New York Post is still locked out of their social media accounts for a story that we now know is confirmed. And it's an earth shattering revelation. Why won't they? It's not confirmed. They were locked out of their accounts because they were pushing a story that was full of bullshit and made allegations about a presidential election. Now, are there some potential issues that you could you could talk about about what, what Twitter's right to be able to d remove this type of information? Absolutely. But the idea that this is some sort of like secret plot by Twitter to block them when they're literally following the guidelines that they've set for their own site that you agree for in the TOS is just ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. This is just a conspiracy. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It is a conspiracy theory bingo card. His reference to media is the majority of media outside of Fox News. So you mean the minority of media? Fox News is the most popular news channel in America. It's the richest news channel in America. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> what? Bye, MS Sloth. Have a wonderful night. Much love. They release the suspension on the New York Post. They're trying their hardest to prevent you from learning about this. If you think I'm doing a good job, please consider sharing this so people can hear about what's going on. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. All right. Of course, all right. All right, Tim. Jesus fucking well. Christ. Let's read the story from Fox Enough. News. Enough of your fucking shilling. The projects. Fox News says, a list of key domestic contacts for a joint venture involving Jim and Hunter Biden and now bankrupt CEFC China Energy Co. 
included former Vice President Joe Biden's current running okay. mate, Senator Kamala Harris, among other prominent Democrats, Fox News has learned. An email exclusively obtained by Fox News with the subject line, Phase 1 Domestic Contacts Projects, and dated May 15th, 2017, Biden's brother, Jim Biden, shared a list of key domestic contacts for Phase 1 target projects. The email is unrelated to the laptop or- Phase 1? That's a scary word. That sounds like phaser. That sounds like, like, it sounds like a plot, a plan. Oh my God. You have to say plurality because the right argues the left is large. If you look at the combined viewership of CNN and MSNBC, like Tim did with Matt Owens and Cuomo, well, he's dumb as shit and that's dumb as shit. Bye bye, bitch. I don't, this is so stupid. I'm not going to engage with that shit. Our drive purportedly belonging to Hunter Biden, the former yeah, vice president. So ridiculous. Son. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I don't know what this means. It could mean that they know Kamala and they wanted her just to be, a, maybe they wanted advice. Who knows? I tell you this. I don't trust him. I don't. And I am worried with a trans-Pacific partnership that was being pushed through by the Obama administration. There was uh, an effort to send our jobs, manufacturing base, and work on foreign business dealings with China. What? What? What are you talking about? What does the Trans-Pacific Partnership have to do with any of this? Okay, so his idea, his idea is that tr the Trans-Pacific Partnership was a secret plot by Joe Biden, Jim Biden, and Hunter Biden to steal jobs from America and give it to China? Why? What? What the absolute fuck? Yeah, the Biden boys. The, the the Biden boys, they're the most famous gang of bandits that America's ever seen. They're stealing manufacturing jobs and giving them to China. That's the essentially what the Trans-Pacific Partnership was going to do, among many, many other things. So if you were to tell me that a bunch of Democrats were involved in this. Gayfesh says, after watching his stream with Vosh and his post-stream conduct, I'm actually less inclined to believe he's a grifter and more inclined to think he's just very, very, very stupid. I think both. Don't you think it's possible that he could be both? Like, I think it's possible that the monetary incentive um, pushes him in the direction of right-wing media, but he's also just sort of too dumb to realize his own biases and that he's sort of being pulled along. And he also doesn't have enough self-respect to believe in being honest and wanting to actually create something. He just wants to make money. And he can make a lot of money by pandering to the whims of right-wing corporations all across America. Yeah, I think it's I think it's perfectly possible for it to be both. I think it's perfectly possible for it to be both. Listen, there are monetary incentives to make right-wing media. Are you like right keep it keep in mind how many right-wing talk shows in America which were which dominate Talk radio. Talk radio in America is dominated by random right-wing bullshitters who just go on and talk about whatever bullshit that they want to, and they make a living doing that. And that is an incentive. That's an incentive. Now, maybe that doesn't make you a grifter per se, but that's definitely an incentive. Um, and then also, you could just be so dumb to not realize how biased and how bad you are at actually parsing the media. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Ace Laces, happy to have you. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know if it's grifting. Yeah, maybe he's not a, maybe he's not a, a grifter, but he is very dishonest and he is very, very, very difficult. Um, he is, uh, he's very difficult to pin down on what he actually believes in. I believe it. Why wouldn't they be? They were gonna, they, they knew the deals that were coming. Why wouldn't they enrich themselves off it? I mean, maybe because it's against the law or hey, it's crooked or corrupt or unethical. I don't know. There you go. Why Tim Pool? Tim Pool knows that he can make a lot of money by pandering to right wingers and doing extremely low effort content. So why wouldn't he self enrich? Oh yeah, this is oh good aces laces. Well, that's exactly why we're going to be covering Tim Pool, and I'm probably going to be covering Tim Pool a little bit more in the future. Hey, Gina Ragnos, thank you so much for the bits. It is your bits, your subs, and your donos, everyone, that makes this channel possible. So thank you very, very much, Gina. Deeply appreciate it. 
but I wouldn't put it past him. They say the list included Harris of California, Chuck Schumer, Amy Klobuchar, Dianne okay. Feinstein, Kirsten Gillibrand, Andrew Cuomo, Bill de Blasio, and former Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe. We're going to learn a little more about it. So don't worry, Ken Witchy. You Democrats all get to learn a lot more. About we're watching some current Tim Pool content, and then we're going to go watch a little video that I found about Tim Pool that talks about where he came from, where his start was. Oh, that's true, Cryptosporidium. The History Channel does show, sell low-effort shows like Ancient Aliens, and those shows have a right-wing bent because you can appeal to simple a simple worldview that sells the world as us versus them and says, "Wow, these mysterious societies that we these these natives they might they must have needed aliens help to build the crazy things they do." Yay, Kenowichi! I'm so happy to hear that. That's my goal. Does Tim Pool have a face on his head that is covered by his beanie? Sources have said. Target. Sources have said he does. To be very, very, very clear, it may just be that those are people they wanted to get in touch with. We'll see how these things roll out because it's been a slow roll, and I'm willing to bet they're going to let this <sighs> fester, let the media try and poo-poo it and downplay it, then drop the evidence. The email was sent to Jim, to Hunter Biden, Tony Bobulinski, Rob Walker, and James Gillier. Bobulinski was an institutional investor who was, was recruited possible. by the Biden family to run their joint venture with now bankrupt CEFC China Energy Co. Bobulinski is a former lieutenant in the U.S. Navy. Oh, uh, Enlid asks, has Tim Pool come out as a full on right winger yet? Like, how do you support Trump as a person with leftist beliefs? Tax policy, climate change, Trump's policies on these are all night and day from the left side. Um, Tim Pool, I don't know if Tim Pool genuinely believes himself to be a centrist or if that's just convenient marketing for him. Tim Pool was really heavily involved in Occupy Wall Street. I don't know if Tim Pool will make a leftward swing at any point, although I did notice in his conversation with Vosh, he made empty gestures towards a class reductionist approach that, oh, we need to focus on class issues. But that's not what he talks about. Tim Pool does not talk about class issues ever. Look at his videos. We were just looking at his at his channel. Do, do you think Tim Pool genuinely gives a shit about class issues? Or is As he just of right now? I believe President why, Donald Trump. Why? Why does it do this? Look at this. All that he talks about is the exact same stuff that Fox News talks about. He never talks about class issues. He doesn't give a shit. I don't think that he gives a shit about any sort of leftist ideal. I think his ideals can be bought and sold by whatever gets him views. And that's what he's doing. Like, I don't know. Maybe that makes him a grifter. Maybe that makes him something else. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, he's like Dave Rubin. He's a lot like Dave Rubin in my mind. But Dave Rubin is... I think Dave Rubin might be dumber than Tim Pool. Purple Purper says, I don't think he honestly believes it. I say that from the interactions I have seen between him and Crowder. Hmm. So, wait, you don't think he honestly believes his right-wing views? You think he's just kind of like, like, he just does it for the money? Like, like 100% grifter? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. And served as a CEO of Sinahawk Holdings, which he said was the partnership between CEFC and Chairman Yi and the Biden family. I mean, that's, this is the Communist Party, man. What? What? You thought he was mostly against the crazy lefties? Like, what crazy lefty, Primo Tugboat? Like, what crazy lefty is he against? All he talks about is... All he talks about is whatever Fox News talks about. You noticed it too. He seems far more amenable to progressive ideas when he engages someone more assertive than he is. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I think that he was getting owned, and so he had to give ground. He had to cede ground. Purple Purple, I don't think he sees himself as a centralist or grifter. I think he's right-wing but wants to use centralist as an appeal and is, and is not some delusion. Okay, so you think that he does that cynically. I think that's possible. It's hard to tell these sort of things. I think it's possible that he cynically uses, and I think he does to a certain degree, but I don't know how much he drinks of his own Kool-Aid, so to say. I think if he made a lot of a lot of donos from having Vosh on, he will keep ha bringing people back, like him back, as long as it's making him money. Yeah, that's possible. I mean, he did say he would have Vosh on again, um, which would be cool as fuck. 
I mean, did you see how much, how many views his video got? His video, his video with Vosh on it got double the views that his other videos get. Like people who think that black people can't be racist or whatever. How many people of those are there? And how many times has Tim Pool actually talked about that? I don't know. I don't think he ever talks about this. What he talks about is basically, I mean, most of his videos, he just goes to Fox News and just reads an article about it and screams about how it's leading to the new civil war. Quote, I was brought into the company by the CEO of James Gilear, Hunter Biden. Bob Ulinsky said in a statement to Fox News, the reference to the big guy in the much publicized May 13th, 2017 <laughs> email is in fact a reference hey, to Joe for the Biden. Follow, Jousters, then. Happy JD, to have you. Joe's brother. Now, I'm not going to read through this statement from Fox News. I want to show you this from the Daily Caller. It is going to... Jumps from Fox News to the Daily Caller. The Daily Caller. Let's just take a look at the Daily Caller. Hmm. Who founded this one? Oh, look. It's Tucker Carlson. It's another right-wing rag. Totally legit. Tucker Carlson's own fucking newspaper. Tucker Carlson, who works for Fox News, an heir of the Swanson fucking, uh, oh, an heir of the Swanson fortune. Tucker Carlson, who literally admitted to being, uh, what's his name? Um, what's his name? Fucking the guy, um, what's the guy's name who ran, um, Fox News? What's his name? Fuck, I can't think of it. Murdoch, Rupert, the guy who, Tucker Carlson, who is on video saying, I am Rupert Murdoch's bitch. If what he tells me to do, I do. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Um, yeah, literally. Y'all ever heard that? Yeah, this was from The Intercept. How fitting. Where's the video? Where's the fucking clip? Here you go. No, like instead of ridiculous, religious. Re re Wait, this is the one right here. Give you an example. Sean Hannity was set to broadcast live from a Tea Party. And Rupert Murdoch the day before said, no, we don't support the Tea Party. We don't support the Republican Party. We don't support any party. And Rupert Murdoch did pull Hannity off of broadcasting live from the Tea Party. Yeah, I think it was a little bit more complicated than that. But we'll talk about was, the uh, I think it was a, it was a miscommunication. Um, but look, I mean... You can go to the Tea Party events. I've been to a lot of Tea Party events. I spoke at a Tea Party event. And I wasn't, you know, I'm not running as a Tea Party candidate. I'm not giving money to Tea Party people. I just, you know, it's a it's, it's a great place to reach people, you know? Sure. But, I, but I, what I'm saying is, I, what I'm saying is at that point, Rupert Murdoch didn't want Hannity broadcasting from there. Yeah. Well, something happened. No doubt about that. I don't know if it was, was it Murdoch? Yeah, it was because Murdoch got, got, received the question. They said, hey, you guys, Fox News are part of Murdoch's the, the most powerful part, man in America. I mean, Rupert Murdoch, I've got to give him credit. When you talk about media conglomerates, he really knows yeah. what he's doing. Yes. He, he is smart. He's very smart. Really yeah. smart and you're tough. His, you're his bitch. <laughs> I'm 100% his bitch. Whatever Mr. Murdoch says, I do. Exactly. Period. You know how you treat your migrant workers that shine up your Bentley and stuff? That Robert Murdoch could treat you that way. Really? Yep. I yes. would be honored if he would cane me the way I cane my workers. <laughs> my servants. One Yikers! Yikers! One of them this morning, there was a spot on the back. You couldn't see it, but on one of my wingtips. And whoa. You Hell to pay. He took an ass whipping for that, didn't he? Well, first I threw my pomegranate at him. He was across the room. Right. And uh, then the silver service. And I said, come here. And I kind of hobbled after him with one shoe on. I caught him finally. Yeah. He didn't. He, and he let you catch him because if he wouldn't have, if he would have kept running, that would have been more of an ass whooping like Kunta Kinta. I think he, I think he enjoyed it. Yeah. Honestly. Anyway, Tuck, I'll talk to you next week, my friend. You guys are the best. Thank you so much, Tucker. <laughs> I am Rupert Murdoch's bitch. Whatever Rupert, Rupert Murdoch tells me to do, I do. You think that's an honest journalist? That is who Tim Pools is citing here. That is who Tim Pool is citing here. Tucker Carlson, Rupert Murdoch's bitch, in his own words, that is who Tim Pool is citing here. So yeah, just so you know what level of honesty and, and cr credibility we're dealing with on the right wing absolute corporate cuck 
Yeah. Oh, he talks about in the other clip in that article. Um, the other clip in that article, Tucker Carlson talks about how he's never had to work a day in his life. He's a millionaire. He will never have to work. He does this because he has a political, because he has a political agenda and it's fun for him. Yeah. 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 Tucker Carlson, me no likey the gays, but me lovey Rupert Murdoch sexually. Yikes. Woo. To ignite. We are only a week. Oh, they do this all the time. Like, I mean, Windleby, these, like, they're not, these people are not subtle. They know they're in power and they believe that no one can ever do anything about it. But we know that that's not the case. We know that things are changing. Tucker does give off femboy vibes. Really? Really? Hmm. And a half away from the day Maybe. of the general election. The election is currently happening. All of this is having an impact. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, shit. Uh, I, I don't know. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Yeah, he said the Kunta Kenti thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he did say that. Yes. Don't know. But... A trove of documents. True, Crypto Spiridium. Tucker done. doesn't have the hips Political for Femboy or the legs. Strategic value of the Biden family. You bring up a good of point. Documents show Biden family links to Chinese business deal. Now I'm going to stop for a second. So a lot of people have said. Tim so here we are. No, Tim Pool didn't. Tim Pool didn't. Um, Tucker did. Tucker Carlson did. Yeah. So just so you know, we are now ten minutes into this video. You want the con context? Here, we'll go play it again. Here we go. Here we go. I'll go back to the article. Here we go. Here's the article. If you all want to read it, bam. There's the article. This is a really amazing article. You guys can read this whole thing um, on your time if you'd like to. Um, that was in here. I think it was like around here. Let's just see if I can play it. Ah. Here we go. The most powerful man in America. I mean, Rupert Murdoch, I've got to give him credit. When you talk about media conglomerates, he really knows yeah. what he's doing. Yes. He, he is smart. He's very smart. Really yeah. smart and you're tough. His, you're his bitch. <laughs> I'm 100% his bitch. Whatever Mr. Murdoch says, I do. Exactly. <laughs> you know how you treat Hi, your Nair, migrant workers and shine up your Bentley and stuff? That Robert Murdoch See, treats you, you know, that I'll way. be going for a few hours. Really? So you're good. Yep. I would be honored if he would cane me the way I cane my workers, <laughs> my servants. One of them this morning, there was a spot on the back. You couldn't see it, but on one of my wingtips. And whoa. You Hell to pay. He took an ass whipping for that, didn't he? Well, first I threw my pomegranate at him. He was across the room. Right. And uh, then the silver service. And I said, come here. And I kind of hobbled after him with one shoe on. I caught him finally. Yeah. He didn't. He, and he let you catch him because if he wouldn't have, if he would have kept running, that would have been more of an ass whipping like Kunta Kinta. I think he, I think he enjoyed it. Yeah. There you go. There was the reference. Yeah. Him joking about how he abuses his workers and he would be honored if, uh, if R Murdoch would abuse him. Yeah, they're fucking, these people are have nothing to lose. Tucker Carlson has nothing to lose. He could be sued into the ground and he would still be a millionaire. He's an heir to the Swanson Foods fortune. Okay. All right, I'll take a look. I'll save this link for later. Maybe we'll take a look at it. Wait, wait, wait. It's not just sarcasm, though. He literally is. Rupert Murdoch owns the company he works at. He is, he owns the company he works at. No journalist, no fucking journalist should ever be willing to put themselves in a position where they could even joke about being the bitch of, of someone who owns their company. That's ridiculous. That discredits the entire organization. Do you understand that like we have journalistic standards? Like there is a code of honor among journalism and honor and respect is incredibly important in order to have a meaningful, um, in order to have a meaningful journalistic uh, culture in any country. You can't trust journalism. Yeah, Hungry Man XXL. Jesus. Bar backyard barbecue. Oh God. Yeah, that's Swan. Yeah, that's Swanson. That's Swanson. Yep, that's the one. This is the company. That's Swanson. Tucker Carlson, the heir of this fortune. Oh, no. Fox has never had any sort of journalistic attitude. They're not taken seriously as a journalistic entity. No one, no journalist takes them seriously. Tim, why won't you talk about Donald Trump and his secret bank account? That's right.
his secret bank account in China, which is on his tax records, which the government knows about and has, uh, I think, one hundred and eighty eight thousand dollars in it because Trump is an international real estate mogul and wanted to set up hotels in China. And he's the president and he hasn't divested from his businesses, which is in violation of the fucking constitution. But there's nobody who can hold him to task because of regulatory capture, because of ju the capture of the justice system. Yeah. Hmm. Doesn't surprise me at all. There's been a bunch of other accusations I can't corroborate. But sure, you want to talk about Donald Trump? We can. That doesn't deflect from what we're learning about Joe Biden. And the Joe Biden scandal is massive. Let's see what he has to say later on, because this is boring. I really don't want to watch Tim Pool just cite a whole bunch of Fox News um, parent, like child companies, like subsidiaries. I believe that the, the Democrats are probably involved in some capacity. Because ah, these baseless conspiratorial speculation is establishment crony politicians have been doing this for generations. You mean like all of the people who kiss up to Donald Trump? Slowly eroding the working class in this country, sending your factory jobs to China. Why? Cheap. It's cheaper. And they get a kickback or something. I don't know. They he doesn't even know. He doesn't even have his own conspiracy organized. It's so frustrating. They become lobbyists for these companies after the fact. Companies got to pay, what, 30 bucks an hour to an American laborer and union wages? Oh, get out of here. Three bucks an hour. Send it over to Xinjiang or something. People will do, you know, they'll get people to work. That's capitalism. That's the thing. You're, you're citing fucking Tucker Carlson, a billionaire heir. All right, let's find another Tim Pool video. This is boring as shit. Let's find another one. Let's see, let's see what he's got. Let's see what he's got. Police prepare for mass riots as Trump victory becoming more likely. Hmm. Signs fourth historic peace deal. COVID hysteria is backfiring as Democrat voters are too scared to vote. Oh my God. Let's take a look. It's no secret that the coronavirus has scared Democrats to a rather extreme degree. If you look at the media, you'll see the left saying, what is going on? Why won't Republicans wear masks? And to be completely honest, you probably should wear a mask. I mean, I have no problem wearing a mask and I don't know. It's cool. Someone sent me a really cool mask, got a little beanie on it. And it's true. A lot of conservatives don't wear masks and some of them get really angry about it. But there was a video today from the Amy Coney Barrett hearings. Damn. Damn, he has some scathing, throwaway, two-second comments about those conservatives there. That's called covering your ass. Where I think it was Mark Meadows. He, like, backs away from the press. Like, yes, they have, Wendell. And takes his mask off to talk, and they go, oh, and they, like, gasp. And he's like, what? <laughs> like, I'm 10 feet away from you. And they're like, no. Like, and then he goes, okay, whatever. And he walks off. The hysteria put out by the media over COVID is backfiring right? on Democrats in a I was just crazy about to say, way. Every time one of these videos come up, I just want to show the COVID charts. Every single time we talk about this, I just want to show the COVID charts. Seriously, holy shit. Now, let me clarify. The media is really, really hysterical about COVID. I think COVID's a problem. I think we want to be safe. I think you should listen to your doctor, and I think we should wear masks. I think if we get some medication out that helps treat uh, COVID, we're, we'll be better off. And I do think Trump has played fast and loose. But Republicans are much less likely to be scared of this, which is creating very serious problems for Democrats. One, according to a Gallup poll, Democratic men and women are absolutely not ready to return to normal activities. And this is why so many of them want to vote by mail. And it's one of the big reasons why the Democrats want universal mail-in voting. Look at this. 95% are not ready to return. Gallup yeah, of course, Gina. That's like, uh, yeah, that's a true. A Gallup poll says, ready to return to normal activities right now, 5% of Democratic men, 3% of Democratic women. This means- Wait, look at the other numbers here. I know it's hard to see. This says 64%
of Republican men and 54% of Republican women are ready to return to normal activities right now. This is what I was talking about earlier in this stream where I mentioned that I have friends and family who've been like, yeah, as soon as Trump wins, we'll be able to go right back out. They're going to get really sick and they're going to get a lot of other people really fucking sick. We're in the middle of another spike. And Tim Pool is making fun of Democrats for being correct. For being correct. A disease that can age your brain 10 years even if you survive it. Look, look, listen. I got to do this a lot, but we are combined we are fighting this sort of disinformation all the time. I just want people to look at what we're dealing with right now. Look at this shit. Look. Boop, boop, boop. We're heading up to another one. We just hit a record day. 78,000 new cases on the 24th. Things have not gotten better. Things are not doing better. Look at how many people are still dying. A thousand people a day. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. It can age your brain 10 years. I can show you this. I know this is scary as shit. Where's the, where's the video? They just did it. They did a video. It was AP that did it. Associated Press. Yeah, AP News. Here we go. Three stages to COVID-19. Brain damage identified. Is this the one? Yeah. No, this is not the one. There was one that was on here the other day. Fuck. Let me try and find it. It was just here. Fuck. Where the fuck is it? Let me Give me a second. Let me just bring this up. Here it is. Here's the shit. This is, for, it was Reuters, sorry. I thought I was thinking it was AP. COVID's cognitive costs, some patients' brains may age 10 years. London, people recovering from COVID-19 may suffer significant brain function impacts with the worst cases of the infection linked to mental decline equivalent to the brain aging 10 years, researchers warned on Tuesday. A non-peer-reviewed study of more than 84,000 people, so keep that in mind, this is not final data, this is just initial data, Keep that in mind. Led by Adam Hampshire, a doctor at Imperial College London, found that in some severe cases, coronavirus infection is linked to substantial cognitive deficits for months. Our analyses align with the view that there are chronic cognitive consequences of having COVID-19, the research wrote in a report of their findings. People who have recovered, including those no longer reporting symptoms, exhibited significant cognitive deficits. Cognitive tests measure how well the brain performs certain tasks, such as remembering words or joining dots on a puzzle. Such tests are usually used to assess brain performance in diseases like Alzheimer's and can also help doctors assess temporary brain impairments. The Hampshire's team uh, re re reported results from 84,000 people who completed a study called the Great British Intelligence Test. The findings, which have yet to be reviewed by other experts, were published online on the, on the MedRxiv website. So again, preliminary, keep that in mind, but this is not the first study that's done on this. Just saying. Why do they post them if they're not peer reviewed? Because it can still be relevant. It can still point in the direction of developing information and we should be we should be having an abundance of caution with a disease that's killed this many people. That's what we should be doing. That's rational to do that. It's it makes sense to do that. Let's continue. As the errors of mail-in voting pile up and they are the Democrats yeah. are going to lose Agreed. Agreed. a lot of Logic. votes. Not only does mail-in voting already negatively impact minority voters and first-time voters, young voters, but there's a higher margin of error across the board. But get this. Not only are Democrats not willing to go out and vote in person. Just, just give me one second here to just show you. Look at these numbers. Worried about getting the coronavirus. Republican men and Republican women 20% and 30% respectively give a shit about getting coronavirus. Concerned about exposure at their place of work, 23 and 39. Always practicing social distancing, 19% and 30%. First of all, Republican women, you're doing way better than your husbands. Avoiding going to public places, 
31, 38. Avoiding small gatherings, 27, 30. Avoiding events, 48, 60. Hey, at least that's a little more comparable. But just look at the difference. Two different realities. Two different realities. Despite the fact that there are provably hundreds of thousands of people dead right now from this disease. And these people don't give a fucking shit. And they don't give a shit because of people like Tim Pool. They don't give a shit because of, 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 of companies like Fox News. Person, they're actually disinfecting their mail-in ballots, ruining them completely. I, I, I'm sorry. I couldn't help but burst out laughing when I heard this. Not at anyone in particular. I'm I don't not, even know I'm, what he's talking about. bad. Man. People's votes need to be counted. Fair. But these people, many of these voters are so out of it, terrified of COVID. They're wiping down their ballots, ruining them, and they have to be thrown out. That, to me, was one of the most insane citation needed shocking things I have seen yet. Now, of course, we've got more stories about mail-in ballots being found in garbage cans, stories about people stealing mail-in ballots, and The Atlantic and The New York Times talk about how there is a very- Vaguely referencing random stories, which we have debunked on this stream. No reference, just random. Serious problem for Democrats related to mail-in voting. This is reality. I'm sure YouTube is going to put some tag underneath my Good. video. They Don't should. take my word for it. I'm going to show you the Atlantic and the New York Times and what they're Go saying it. about it. It would seem. And there's another Axios story on this too. Democrats are trying to move away from mail-in voting because it does have a higher margin of error. Votes are more likely no. to be disqualified no. if they're sent through the mail for a variety of They're moving away from it because of Donald Trump's attempt to suppress mail-in voting. They forced it. Didn't Project Veritas just check? catch some lady from Texas admitting to voter election fraud. Project Veritas paid a guy to lie. Project Veritas is a literal fraud organization. If you believe anything Project Veritas says, you have been, you are the victim of a con. You have been conned. Project Veritas is one of the most dishonest news sources that you can possibly look at. You believe them. I'm very sorry for you. I'm very sorry for you. I would highly recommend looking into some criticism of, of Project Veritas because you will find very quickly that they are literally one of the most dishonest, uh, dishonest media organizations that exists in this country. Why should I not believe them? Well, there's your problem right there. You do, do you not, uh, uh, you, you enjoy myself. Do you not believe that you should try and find the truth in the world and not just look for whatever confirms your biases? Do you not believe? I have no problem. As a streamer, I have no problem criticizing the sources that I use all the time. In fact, I, I, I go in and deliberately call out issues in any source that I use. Why would you not do the same? Or are you just looking to have your ego complimented? You're just looking to have your biases confirmed. Windleby, it's because they're less intimidated. That's why. Because there's not a whole bunch of us in there. It's just how it goes. Reasons. But Democrats are just too scared. I True, I'm not trying to be Windleby. I have a great site. Yeah, if you believe Project Veritas, you should check out Time Cube. Uh... Uh, Lijin the Kobatroid says, the real issue with COVID is the very lasting damage. The deaths are very, very terrible, but since the majority will survive, the long lasting organ damage is a serious issue. The lungs are where it lives, and due to that, it travels and gets deposited around the body, but certain tissue or areas are more vulnerable, notably the brain, doing it to being a weaker, quote unquote, structure. The third point would be the heart, as it simply is a hub for blood, but it seems to handle it better than the former two. True! That's very true. I tweeted about this on Twitter earlier, how America is in the middle of a, of a disability crisis, and we, we don't even know the scope of it yet. After this whole pandemic finally passes, whenever it does, whether it's through uh, 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 so many people dying that the virus can't spread anymore, or we live with COVID forever, we are going to have so many more disabled people than you can possibly imagine. 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, that's fair. What you're bringing up, Lijan, is very is very easy to verify information, and you don't need to be a doctor to come to those sort of safe conclusions. Rakasan says, you should talk with Spectre of Syndicalism. He had COVID earlier this year. Okay, yeah, that would be very interesting. Um, I may have had COVID earlier this year, which sucks. Project Veritas doesn't even pretend to be real. They just push out the most sensational stories and let them go viral. That's true. They also deliberately lie and they've actually ruined innocent people's lives. Project Veritas is a genuinely deeply toxic group. Because Project Ver oh, I don't even I don't even know how to get get into that one. Project Veritas is the one of the most weaselly organizations. They're incredibly litigious. So that's probably why. Um I think I follow him already. But it's true. Look, I've been trying to book leftist guests for the Timcast IRL podcast for some time. I've tried booking uh -oh. leftist guests on this channel and other channels for a long time and it's very difficult. Okay, so you enjoy myself. Then what you should do is you should find out if what they're reporting is actually legit. And guess what? It isn't. They literally paid someone $10,000 to lie about mail-in ballots. That is true. I agree with you, Gina Ragnos. Um, in any competent society, Project Veritas would be rehabilitated. Leftists won't come debate me. Vosh does. The right freaks out. Difficult. It's True. always been difficult. Going back to the days when I worked at Vice and when I worked at Fusion, ABC News, it was very, very difficult to get leftist personalities, and it still is. And right now, the number one... Com I wonder why. I wonder why. Maybe it's because of McCarthyism? Maybe it's because... Uh left it because right-wingers go absolutely ape shit if they see any challenge to their viewpoint will threaten people with death maybe that's why maybe that's why there's not a whole lot of leftist people who are willing to talk with people like tim pool maybe it's because a lot of people don't want to fucking put their lives at risk by going into your studio and getting covid and a handful were willing to complain and then they did I hear from people is, but what about COVID? Okay, look, we're, you, if you can't handle it, we got alcohol wipes. We, we, we take serious precautions. We got hand sanitizer. I got right-wing individuals feeling totally fine. It's totally safe and legal where, where we're at. Travel, it's... Yes, he was, Rakasan. Gavin McKins was the co-founder of Vice, and they have disavowed all involvement with him, and they fired him because he was imp impossible to work with. It's totally fine, but they just don't want to do it. And they cite COVID as the number one reason. Of course, I'm sure many conservatives would say they're just scared. No, these people really want to like, you know, own the cons or whatever it is they think. They're going to come and debate me and, and whatever. I don't debate people. They're scared of COVID. Republicans aren't. So let's take a look at what's going on with mail-in voting yeah, the Proud and Boy. how the hysteria yes, from the ace. left over yep. COVID is backfiring. Yeah, the, the founder of the Proud Boys, the chairman of the story. Proud Boys, who's no longer involved with the Proud Boys for a complicated reason we talked about or we researched, but I haven't ta yet talked about, but we will do that at some point. Point is, um, the point is, yes, uh, Gavin McKins, the founder of the Proud Boys, was also one of the co-founders of Vice. Uh, and he's been ousted and has absolutely nothing to do with Vice because he's absolutely impossible to work alongside. Yep. And may, the polls may be right. Listen to this. The polls may be... This kind of seems moot to me. Unless these personalities themselves hand out death threats, then there really is no issue on coming on podcasts and debating them. A personality doesn't really hold rep responsibility for their supporters' actions. That's not true at all. Are you kidding me? If every time somebody came on my show, they were subjected to an unbelievable amount of harassment, that would affect the willingness of people to come on my show. As it turns out, people don't want to be subjected to a deluge of death threats when you foster an actively toxic um, um, atmosphere. And you'll notice my community is fucking awesome. And the reason why com my, my community is fucking awesome is because I hold my community to high standards and I kick out people who are toxic elements in my community. If you're a toxic element, you have to kick out if, if, if you have to kick out toxic elements, if you don't want a toxic community, you have to take responsibility for your community as a creator, as someone who garners a community. Now, you can never have full control over your community. That's that's true. You can't. But you absolutely have to take responsibility.
Yeah, exactly. What's the point of being an... We, we literally call them influencers. We absolutely... We absolutely call them... We call them influencers. You have to be responsible for the people you cu cultivate. That's why I like when creators get mad at their communities. I get mad at my community sometimes, but usually not. I have a pretty good one. My rules were... Listen, I borrowed rules from Vosh from the get-go because Vosh's community is awesome. Vosh's community is great. Now, is there always going to be, like, you cannot control every member of a community. Obviously, there's always going to be people who take it too far. There's always going to be people who are kind of annoying. But you can cultivate a positive space that encourages good social activity. So, yeah. Completely right. Donald Trump may be on track for a resounding defeat. One of the worst defeats ever. Flying in the face True. of precedents. And then the Democrats wipe their ballots down, which get disqualified, and they don't show up to the polls because they're scared of COVID. That's actually and it hilarious. Backfires on them. Yikes, so, man! So this is what we talk. This is what we call living in a bubble. This is what we call living completely in a bubble. The idea that you think that Donald Trump, uh, that because you read one story about someone accidentally ruining a ballot with disinfectant, that that means that millions of votes. For, for Biden are going to be destroyed. That is living in a bubble. Yeah, he probably saw one person on Twitter. C citation, just trust me, bro. Yeah, exactly. Before we get started, head over to timcast.com slash donate. If you'd yeah, like to support yeah, that's true. The funniest thing in the world was Tim's like, Vosh, you live in a bubble as he talks about shit like this. All right, Rakasan, have a wonderful night. Thanks for coming by. Work. There are many ways you can give, but the best thing you can do, All right, share get the fuck this out of here, video. Tim friends or maybe you're right to go out and vote it's going to negatively negatively impact the democrat vote in this election and if you're someone who is scared of covid please do not disinfect your mail in ballots i'm going to show you the story i know i should set up a bitcoin you, your vote wallet will be disqualified. I? we want all I should votes take bitcoin. to count if that means biden wins then so be it please let me share this information with you and hopefully it would help it will help make sure your vote counts it also helps X Anal says, there are some things to think about. You can disavow certain behaviors and disregard negativity in your community to hell and back, but people are still sentient and self-controlling people, and the ultimate decision falls on the individual. People have always harbored rebellious tendencies uh, when confronted with strict rule sets and guidelines. Yes, but the rule sets and guidelines reduce that. If you have a, a, there's a, there's a, there's a saying that goes around. If 25% of people in your audience are Nazis, you have a Nazi audience. And the reason for that is because there are many viewpoints that are so toxic to a space that other people can't coexist in that space. And I, agree, I think that that applies to many different views. If you have people who are constantly harassing, sending death threats to one another, and you do nothing to punish those people, to get those people out of your communities, then your community is going to be shit. It's not about, yeah, exactly. It's about making it as good as possible. It's about, it's about getting rid of the toxic elements that ruin it for everyone else and encouraging social behavior. These are systemic approaches to how we run things and it works. People who do stuff like what I do have great communities. People who don't have fucking slurs and harassment and death threats and all this shit. Um, no, they usually don't. You enjoy myself. They really, really don't. Some people do, but yeah. Support the channel. And as you know, I don't got a big marketing department. I just rely on word of mouth, but also don't forget to like subscribe at the notification bell. Let's take a look at this first poll just to quickly re go over this as we start moving through what's happening with the backfiring of this COVID response from Gallup, October 7th, the COVID-19 responses of men versus women. Okay. Gallup did a poll. Data collected via the Gallup panel as part of COVID-19 tracking poll reveal that throughout the panic, women have expressed more concern than men. Now, uh -huh. that's the general breakdown. And I think okay. this shows why Democrats, one of the reasons why they're more likely to be hurt by this. In fact, Donald Trump is doing very poorly among women. He's tried very hard to get the suburban female vote. He's struggling. We'll see how it plays out. But women are more likely. The true tolerance is tolerance of intolerance, or well, that's how I define tolerance. Not acceptance, but tolerance. Well, that doesn't work. It does not work. 
there are many spaces in which you cannot foster a usable space. It is for, for sheer pragmatic purposes. You cannot foster a usable space if you tolerate disgusting intolerance. Imagine, imagine if I tried to run, a ch like I'm a trans person. Imagine if I tried to stream and and we incur we allowed people to just be rampantly transphobic in chat all the time. First of all, Tons of trans people wouldn't want to come hang out in my space because it would be horrible. Secondly, it would be terrible for me, and I wouldn't want to deal with the same bullshit transphobia that I get all the time for in my fucking DMs. So I say, no, in this space, that is not allowed because it ruins it for myself and everyone else. ...to be worried about COVID than men. And Democrats are more likely, or I should say women are more likely to be Democrat. According to a poll by Pew, okay. I believe it's around 68% of millennial women are registered Democrats. Oof. We can see Damn, getting percentage blown of out. Americans wearing masks. That's right. You heard it here. Don't support Trump if you want to have a girlfriend. Your highest chance of having a girlfriend is to not be a Republican. Bam. Bam. Uh, y what? You enjoy myself. I don't think I'm going to just make a guess here and I'm going to guess that you've never actually encountered an intolerant view. Be honest, you enjoy myself. Are you a, are you a white cis straight guy? Just be honest. It's outside the home. Only a few points more for women than men. But the main story here as far as it goes in terms of the election, attitude Answer the question, you enjoy myself. Hmm. Hmm. Thinky. ...and behaviors related to COVID-19 by party and gender. Now, I'm a bit, I'm, I am a bit upset that Gallup didn't include independent voters because that could show... Uh, that could show that Trump is on That's track not what I win. asked you. I said, I'm going to guess that you haven't actually encountered intolerance. Are you a white cis straight guy? Are you a white cis straight guy? If it turns out 30 or 40 percent of independent voters feel safe and are ready to return to normal, then they're probably yeah, going to go out and vote. But of course, just because they're independent doesn't mean do they will support Trump. Yeah, I probably should. They may actually go out and support Biden. Could be good for but Biden as well. I just don't want well. the screen to get too messy. So they don't show this, but check it out. Democratic men. Yeah, and I want to reward to normal activities right now. Only five percent. The question was, you enjoy myself. Are you a white cis straight guy? No, I'm just asking. Are you a white cis straight guy? Sent. Just, just answer the question. It's not that hard. Just answer it. You won't answer. You won't answer. I'm a white cis bi male. Not that these characters just d define much, but they do. They do. Your chances of have of encountering disgusting hate as a white cis bi male are significantly less. Yes, I am white. And guess what? Because I'm white, I don't experience racism. On any meaningful level. I don't. I really do not. I experience transphobia constantly. I experience misogyny live constantly. Yes, but but Peacecraft, there is validity to idpol. There is a lot of validity to idpol. There is some very real things to talk about in identity politics. This isn't frivolous idpol. Yes, hatred is hatred, but your likelihood of experiencing and understanding hatred is much, much less if you don't experience it. White, cis, straight guys have I have a much lower chance of being hated irrationally for some intrinsic trait than anyone else. It's not impossible. Like, for example, you could be made fun of or hated because you're short, and that would be something that would be irrational and unfair, but it's much less likely. It's not that whites can't experience racism. It's not that they can't. It's just that here in America, you don't. You really, really don't. The chance of you experiencing any form of racism in America as a white person is next to nothing. It's just simply true. That's a fact. That's a fact. 
Yeah, I don't. I, but but it happens all the time, Kanawichi. People don't even think about it. They don't even know what they're talking about. Someone called me a white boy. That's not racist. That's oh my god. Yeah, I know. It's so yeah. I know. I know you're just joking. It's just like pe some people think that. <sighs> anyway, let's get back to this ridiculous. I don't even know what we're watching with this Tim Pool thing. His videos are so boring. His videos are so boring. Well, heightism is a very real thing. As an HR man, I've I've had held many and been to many lectures about that topic. It's pretty crazy how deep it goes and it affects many tas uh, facets. I agree with you. I agree with you. I don't I don't disagree with you. I mean, only 3% majorities of both Democrat men and women are avoiding public spaces, 70% and 73. Then you take a look at Republicans yeah. and it's inverted. Republicans only 30. This is 30 damning of Republicans. This shows that Republicans don't give a fucking shit about any of their countrymen. Intersectionality, I think, is the word you're looking for, Will Van B. Discussing intersectionality. 1% are avoiding public places. 64% of Republican men are ready to return to normal. And 54% of Republican women. Think about what that means for voting in person, which will. Think about what that means for voting in person. Yeah, it means that Republicans are going to spread a whole bunch of disease and Democrats have been forced into a position where they're going to have to get sick because of Republicans going into voting places because mail-in voting has been derailed by Donald Trump. That's what that means, Tim Pool. That's what that means. Hey, thank you very much for the subscription. Deeply appreciate it. I think that was a YouTube sub. Thank you so much. Yeah, people use identity politics as a term pejoratively, which they shouldn't. Which they absolutely shouldn't. Will be happening in oh, most that's places. true, Crypto Spiridium. Universal mail-in yeah. voting is only affecting a few states. This means Republicans don't care. They're going to go out, they're not going to care about masks, and they're going to vote. And the yeah, and they're going to also get a lot of people sick. Ones that do vote by absentee, also probably not going to care. But this suggests, at least in my opinion, Democratic men and women are very unlikely to go out and vote. Oh, my God. You enjoy myself, obviously. Obviously, that's identity politics. That's very bad identity politics. But what we're talking about here, wait, you've given an example of why talking about identity politics is important. Because Jim Crow targeted people because of their identity. It was identity politics that was harming people. So we have to talk about it and understand that white people weren't targeted by Jim Crow. Black people were. So you have to account for that when you're talking about politics. Wait, really, gay fish? Really, gay fish? Let's take a look at this. What's this? Shoe on head. What the fuck? You can apparently get a strike on your channel for videos that you did not make that you put in your private watch later playlist? What? Based on the screenshot, it looks like it's a warning. You should not You should have received an email to get more info on why you got it. This sounds like an error. What the actual fuck is this? Yeah, this seems like an error. I'm sure they'll fix that. There's no way that that can be. That is no way. Yeah, there's no way that that can actually last. Yeah, that, that'd be wild. That would ruin, that would destroy YouTube. That would completely destroy it. You enjoy myself. My point is that if you're going to perpetuate identity policy, you may get results similar to every other time in history it's been used. No, that's not true. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't actually follow logically. What you're saying is just not true. That is like a weird version of a slippery slope fallacy we identity politics is a frame of analysis you can use it negatively or you can use it positively you have to be willing to analyze on identity politics in a society that is discriminated against people based on identity you have to you have to more likely to vote in person and the atlantic and the new york times note this yeah. People, in a story from the wait, Atlantic. Wait, really? You've only how, seen it used negatively? Do you have an example? Do you, Wait, so you've never seen a positive example of identity politics? I can tell you one. 
allowing gay marriage. Bam. Identity politics, done. Positive identity politics, good. Done. Allowing gay marriage is a positive use of identity politics. It's saying, holy shit, we have a fuckload of laws in this country that make it illegal for gay people to be able to get married. That is fucked. So we need to pass a law that overrides these laws because they are discriminatory. Bam. Positive identity politics. Done. Voting by mail. Everything makes people go, this will destroy YouTube, and then it doesn't because they basically have a, a monopoly. Well, this the reason why I say this would destroy YouTube is because it would actually destroy... Um, because it would actually destroy your ability to use playlists whatsoever. Like, that would be very bad. That wouldn't help them at all. I can't imagine it's useful for even them. Yes, the 1960s civil rights movement was literally identity politics. Huge positive success. success. There are actually no gay zones in Poland? Yeah, because Poland is having a Nazi uprising. Could cost Biden the election? I kid you not. While it Jouster Zen, thank you so very much for the prime donation. That really helps my channel. Thank you so very much. Deeply appreciate it. Happy to have you here. In-person voting looks safer than expected. Mail-in voting looks more dangerous, not because of fraud, but because of human error and partisan politics. Are you kidding me? You mean if the Democrats just listened to Donald Trump, they would be better off? Trump has Yay. been saying over and over again, fraud, fraud, fraud. Yes, Not Poland. because of fraud. Yeah, Poland is having a fascist uprising right now. And there are literally no, there are literally zones of cities where LGBT people are not allowed to go. It's totally fucked. Their country is in a total mess. It's really bad. And I've said the same thing. It is not fraud. Trump needs to get off the fraud train because it's impropriety and error. The margin of error for mail-in votes, according to the New York Times, is two to one compared to in person. Do you want to know why that is? That's because that's because we make it really hard to vote by mail. That's why the margin of error is so big. Holy fuck. We've talked about this. This is just Prager U, but 20 minutes long person voting. You are twice as likely to have your vote discounted. According to the Washington Post, the groups most affected by this will be minority voters and young voters. The voting blocks Democrats are counting on to win. Could you imagine? This is this entire video has been accidentally left wing. This entire video is accidentally left wing. He's talking about voter suppression. He's talking about fucking voter suppression. Why do I engage with this sort of politics if only to work yourself up? Literally nothing any of us say or do tonight is going to cha change anything. Wrong. You are wrong. That is black-pilled as shit. Don't be such a doomer. I have 61 people watching right now. 61 people who are willing to engage with my content, hear my voice, and talk to other people about it. You want to see why? This is why. Tim Pool has 1.17 million subscribers and he gets almost 500,000 views a video. This is why I talk about this, because there needs to be a counter narrative to this bullshit. That's why. That's why. The reason why I watch this stuff, the reason why I react to this shit is because a lot of people are seeing it and being lied to. And I am here to ca provide a counter counter narrative. That's why. Imagine if the polls are right and the Democrats just get disqualified because of this. The New York Times is a similar story. As Trump sows doubts on mail, some Democrats True. push in-person voting. Good for them. Look, man, Trump's right. Mail-in voting has its issues. You want to vote. That is and true, Mayor of sure Albuquerque. Count. Of Albuquerque. I want to read you Sorry. the story from The Atlantic because this is a serious statement. How it could... You enjoy myself. Right. So if Tim Cast is Lake Michigan, you're a pebble being tossed into the water from Navy Pier in Chicago and hoping some guy in Green Bay notices. Wrong. Wrong. I am a pebble being tossed in and 68 people are watching me toss the pebble in and then they start tossing pebbles too. And more people come and watch my shit and I will no longer be a pebble. Bam, look at that. Now you have a reason. 
Like, subscribe, comment on my videos, help me fucking grow. Because if you want less Tim Pool and more meaningful commentary, political commentary in this world, that's how you get it. You support me by chucking more pebbles into the lake. Bam. Done. Cost Biden the election? I mean, that would be scary for Democrats. We are all pebbles, and together we make a mighty landslide. Pebble gang. A swarm of pebbles gushing into the lake and changing the surface. That's us. Right? But I want to give Pebble you the gang. hard Pebble official gang. warning first. From WHIO TV 7, California election officials to voters, stop disinfecting your mail-in ballots. I, c I couldn't believe it when I saw this. People are actually spritzing down their ballots and smearing the ink. It's becoming garbage. Don't do this. Let's see how many. Please. I want to see how many actually want all did this. To count. I think, you know, I like Trump for the war True, stuff. True, like Delhi. He's, 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 he's got these peace deals. He's pulling out of the Middle East. True, That's Jouster Zen. This is the energy. This is the bloomer energy I'm talking about. Remember? Hey, do you all remember? There was a guy we were talking about at the beginning of this channel. Do you all remember um, Vursh? Vursh? Vush? Vosh? Remember Vosh? A year ago, he was a little bigger than I am. One year ago, he was a little bit bigger than I am right now. Now, he's pulling 15,000 views per stream. Not gonna, I, I don't know if I'll ever be that big, but there's a possibility. Now, 15,000 views per stream is wild. I'd love to get to that point. And I'd love to see Vosh get even bigger. That's very true, Lijin. That's very true, Lijin. A single seed can reforest a charred land. Very true. Yeah, I remember back in the old Humboldt apartment days. The cozy days of the cozy corner and the clan gang. <laughs> remember clan gang? It's original meaning. This is so boring. Critical race theory is big for me, but look, I'm a big boy. If, if Donald Trump loses, I'm going to laugh. Joe Biden, I can't believe he'd win if he does. But hey, oh, I laughed meme. when Trump won too. I'm not going to cry about it. I want your vote to count. I want everyone to have their say. And that means if you're a Democrat scared of COVID, your vote counts. Do not disinfect your ballots. Take a look at this. They have some photos. Stephanie Lynn says, do not do this if you want your vote to count. Election officials tell me they've gotten at least 100, 100 damaged ballots. 100. Do you know what the population of Sacramento is? Sacramento. Let's see. The city of Sacramento. 500,000 people. 100 ballots out of a city of, of 500,000 people were damaged by disinfectant. And this is enough for him to make a 30-minute video on it. Damaged ballots so far from voters who've tried to disinfect the paperwork. In one case, someone tried to microwave their ballot. Oh, no. <laughs> God, Tim Pool really does have negative charisma. I just can't even believe. How the fuck? Do, is it weird to say that Tim Pool makes Joel Olstein look more entertaining? No. That's not weird. Joel Olstein has crazy charisma. That guy built an empire on prosperity Christianity. He's evil as fuck, but he has charisma. So let me ask this. We know what it looks like when the right side of the political spectrum gets too radical in their rhetoric. What type of rhetoric should we look out for? Should we look out for on the left? When does it go too far? Oh, I can tell you. I can tell you when that is. Tankies. Tankies are a great example of people who take left-wing rhetoric too far. In fact, I've been thinking about doing this. I've been thinking about doing a tanky stream because tankies have been driving me fucking nuts over the last week, and I've been seeing a lot of them. So there you go. We talk about it. We've talked about it on this panel numerous times. You're not going to find somebody who, uh, who fucking is in this channel. Demon Mama is not someone who's blind to buy, to, to left-wing misbehavior. I've literally called it out and gotten fucking shit for it. Where do I find the tankies? People put them on my wall. Well, we'll talk about it then. We'll talk about it during the Twitter section because 
We're going to talk about it. We're going to, don't worry. We're going to talk about it on the Twitter section. That's part of what I want to talk about. Yes, please do, Kobe Bobby. DM me on Discord and I'll take a look at it during the Twitter section. We're almost there. We're just going to do a little more Tim Pool and then we're going to talk about Twitter stuff. Oh, man. Now, these are not all Democrats, mind you, but California is, is two thirds Democrat in the state. Could you imagine? Republicans aren't scared of COVID for the most part. They're less that's like bad. And that's a bad thing. That is a bad thing. People are going, they are going to get people sick. And here's the thing. They might die of COVID, but they're going to spread COVID to like a hundred plus people in the time that they're not afraid of COVID. This is a huge problem. This is why America is suffering so much worse than the rest of the fucking planet. Likely to be doing things like this. The registrar of voters tells me pink envelope and mail-in ballots were processed by machine weeks ago and are safe to handle. Damaged ballots will not be processed. Quote, we understand if for the outgoing white envelope that you that you get that maybe the mail service carrier may have touched, you want to kind of hold it aside for 24 hours. Bailey Canelos told the news station, everything inside the pink return envelope, the ballots themselves, they have been inserted by a machine weeks ago, so they are safe. Officials told KCRA that they are working to get new ballots to people who sent in damaged ones. Good, good, good. I See, nothing burger. Not only that, not only was it only 100 people, but they're getting replacement ballots. You don't need to get more radical in your rhetoric to combat them. Uh, wait, let's see. To combat them. As the radical ideals will polarize people naturally, eventually the rational people will come together as long as we try to retain uh, our rational. And Demon Mama pointed out an opposite. Yes, 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 that's true. Yeah, that's true. That's true, Cryptosperdium. Want their ballots to count. This was a mistake. But think about this. People are voting early. Just, okay, like, as a final note on this stupid video, we're going to watch one more piece of a Tim Pool video. These are boring as absolute fuck. But just remember, every single time, every single time we've tuned in on one of these, every single time we've investigated the claims made by right-wingers about about election fraud it's always turned out that the people ended up having their vote it just took a little bit of time that's it that means the sis that means that part of the system is functioning that means it's functioning right if a ballot is damaged and people get a replacement ballot and are able to vote that part of the system is functioning correctly that's not an indication of fraud or a, a huge problem with the system that's the system actually succeeding at what it's trying to do it's not that hard that's not this hard of a process this is some level of cognitive dissonance that's just so hard to parse let's figure out another one let's watch one more tim pool one before we do the twitter stuff and let's see we got to close all these fucking windows jesus fucking christ what did he say i want to see what he said about this the mass riots one might be fun Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to do mass riots or do we want to see what he had to say about the kidnapping of the Democrat governor? Which one? Mass riots or governor? Riots. Okay. We got one vote for riots. Kidnapping governor. Oh, two votes for kidnapping the governor. Governor, three votes. Riots, two votes, two to three. We could do a poll. I'm bad at polls. The commands, I'm bad at them. Hold on, I can I can try. Let's see. Let me do a poll. Is it working? Why is the poll thing not working? It should work. Hmm. Oh, that's so weird. Okay, well, listen. Well, there's supposed to be a poll command that lets you set it up, but I don't know why it doesn't work. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know. Okay. So far, we have Democrat governor winning. We have, let's see. Gov, okay, it's the governor. We're doing the governor, all right? In a story that is both Multiple. shocking. We have, we have, let me count up all the, all the votes so you know that this is a democracy. One kidnapping, two kidnapping, uh, one riots versus two kidnapping, three kidnapping versus one, versus one riots. 
Uh, then we have here, we have on this side, we have two riots, three kidnapping. F uh, four, wait, 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 I fucked it up. No, wait, three riots, three kidnapping, one for the governor. So that means four, three versus four. Uh, three versus five. Three versus six. Bam, there we go. There we go, we'll do the governor. Ah, there relieving. we go. Gina just pushed it even harder. Landslide for the kidnapping. Let's see what Tim Pool has to say about the kidnapping of a governor. 13 people have been charged in plots against the Michigan government. Seven are being charged by the Michigan Attorney General over plots against law enforcement and the state capitol building. And six people are being charged by the FBI for a plot to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer, who they Have described a nice as a tyrant. Now, I say this story hey. is... Hey, thank you so very much for the Twitch Prime sub. Means the world to me, God's ears. Thank you so much. Those Prime subs really help. So thank you very, very much. It is, it is viewers like you who contribute to this channel that make this possible for me to keep doing this streaming. So thank you so much. Um, there's supposed to be a command for the poll, but I don't know why it's not working. I don't know why it's not working. I'll have to figure it out. Um, I'm going to tool around with some more website stuff. I've been doing a lot of work on the website, but some things I still haven't ironed out yet. So forgive me. It's shocking because we're actually hearing that right-wing groups are making plans to shut down what they view as tyrannical government to go after people they feel are committing treason and hold mock trials. This is well beyond extremism. And it's extremely troubling considering Gretchen Whitmer lost her court cases, her powers are being stripped, and the AG said they will no longer enforce her unconstitutional edict. The right is winning. Plots like this only make things worse. Damn. And if it's true that other right Damn. Tim Pool actually kind of calling them out. I am amazed. Credit goes to Tim Pool here. He's doing the I disavow, I disavow, but that's a pretty strong disavowal, despite the fact that he's been talking about a civil war coming. But let's just say that's that, fair enough. He did the disavow. Yeah, that's true, Kobe Bobby. That is a little bit of a slip, isn't it? Wing groups are plotting things like this. And the FBI has said that right, far right groups are actually a serious threat. It's extremely troubling when you consider that they're winning their, their lawsuits. In Pennsylvania, for instance, Trump has declared victory in Pennsylvania and Michigan over lawsuits that say the COVID lockdowns are unconstitutional. Now, I understand these people view I don't know if that's a victory, but as okay. committing an unlawful act, and the courts have agreed. But this is too much and too far. Now, for the other group of individuals, the other seven, they were planning on going after cops. I mean, that may as well be Antifa as far as I'm concerned. Wait, wait a minute. Okay, you're losing points here, Tim. That may as well be Antifa as far as I'm concerned. What? What? All right, you lost a few points there, Tim. I was Do proud of you for a second. Civil unrest and conflict. We want normalcy and peace. But it is true, unfortunately, that these Democrat governors are absolutely abusing their power. And it is true that there are cops who are also just falling in line and following orders. And it's a serious problem. But the problem is resolved in the courts. And that's the good news, that the courts are ruling in favor of actual mm. constitutionalists and the right. And the Democrats are actually losing. Now, my bigger fear is what happens in November following the election if we see Michigan and Pennsylvania jammed up because of these changes in the rules, there may be other groups like this. But let me just tell you, set the record straight. I do not fear far right groups and right wing militias at all. You know why? Because the Fed stopped. Because you're right wing. Stopped them. That's why it's relieving. I'm not worried about this. They have informants. There are people who know these these individuals who are who are telling the feds, look what these groups are trying to do. There are right-wing individuals calling them out and shutting it down. Where? You know what's really funny? You know what's really funny about this? Did you know that a lot of the people who got right-wingers and neo-Nazis busted after Charlottesville were Antifa? 
Did you know that? Did you know that a lot of the information that the FBI attained was from anti-fascist organizers who had information that had been keeping tabs on right-wing fucking people who wanted to assassinate political leaders, who wanted to kill members of their community? Whoops. It's not like the honorable right is turning on these people. Where are the Antifa informants? 133 days of rioting and low-tier terrorism. What? What? Oh my God, he can't do it. He can't just, he can't just disavow these people. He has to tie it in. A low tier because they're not showing up armed and kidnapping people. They're burning down buildings and it is a, here's the way I describe. Wasn't it, didn't they find out, didn't they find out that a lot of the fires were caused by fucking Boogaloo boys? And not actually anyone associated with Antifa at all in any way, shape, or form. Oh my god. I bet. Right wing Low tier terrorism. I guess you can call it right wing. I don't know how, how else you describe it. Is a sharp blade. When it strikes, it's piercing. It's terrifying. It's shocking. But it's easily sought out. It's easily discovered and shut down. And that's why this story is in front of us right now. The far left is more like a blunt object, a repeated smack over the head, enough so that there's too many people, the feds can't stop them all, and they attack homes and burn down. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You heard it here. Antifa is stronger than the feds. It's a blunt object. Oh, my God. Buildings. I'll tell you what scares me more. We have a federal law enforcement apparatus shutting. So he devoted three minutes to talking about how the right winger shouldn't do this. What are we going to bet that the next 20 minutes are going to be him talking about how bad Antifa is? Down groups that are trying to kidnap governors or other extreme activities, which which I'll, I'll remind you is detrimental to the actual conservative cause to the right, to Republicans, because Trump <laughs> is winning in these cases. It makes them look bad. But the feds shut him down. That makes me feel safe. Good. But the left gets away with it. What? What are you talking about? There were there were people who were not even proven of to be a part of any sort of Antifa organization that were black bagged in Portland. Just swoop, scooped up and dumped into a car. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, and also, why did law enforcement treat the Bundy clan as kings exactly crypto? Oh my fucking god. This is so... Oh, this is so... This is it. We had one minute... One minute of him being okay and saying, oh, yeah, maybe this is bad. And then immediately spending the rest of the time. Look at the ratio. One minute of, of, of disavowal to 26 minutes of, of fucking how bad fucking Antifa is. Democrat governors and mayors allow it to persist. And it's partly no, why. No, they don't. Find me one Democrat mayor. One Democrat governor who has allowed this to persist. You do realize that in Portland, the area that's seen the most unrest, the police have been brutally beating and arresting people for nearly half the year. They do not let them get by. They just don't want Trump's goons messing up their own process of oppression. This is so fucking ridiculous. You probably see right-wing individuals call for trials where they don't worry you know, storm Kana Witchie, we're not going to sit through the whole thing we're going to switch over to talking about twitter after this this is just ridiculous a capitol building take the governor yeah true purple purple uh, everything good has always come from the right everything bad always comes from the left and then have a a, a a treason trial my fear is what happens after november 3rd and i gotta tell you I'm not worried about the right wing groups. I'm worried about the left wing groups that seem to operate with impunity. Let me show you what's going on with these. I'm not worried about the right wing groups that nearly kidnapped and killed a governor, but I am worried about the left wing groups that are constantly cracked down on by the police and occasionally have apparently allegedly been involved in some rioting. Okay, my dude. Stories and break down what happened. But we also have more news. The Democrats are talking about... Didn't the mayor in Seattle or Portland join the rioters? In Portland, 
Ted Wheeler went one night to stand with one particular group of protesters, not rioters, protesters, a peaceful protest, and his own police tear gassed him. But then he continued to keep tear gassing them. In Port in Seattle, the mayor has has literally been in cahoots with the police chief to allow the police to continue to to uh chemical uh to uh what's the tear gas to tear gas entire neighborhood blocks so no that you have been pro propagandized to on that that is not true ted wheeler once went out with a, an explicitly peaceful group not a riot and he got tear gassed by his own police when the tear when the police fired tear gas too early before his photo stunt was over whoops whoopsies Moving Donald Trump under the 25th Amendment in some kind of unhinged last ditch effort to stall, I have no idea. It makes no sense. But I'm going to show you exactly why I believe the far left is a more serious threat. And, it's, and it has to do with the fact that the feds deal with the actual serious threats. Antifa's getting away with it, and they're attacking people's homes, and they're escalating their tactics. Mean Citation needed, my dude. Citation fucking needed. Meanwhile, these. Dudes who go on Facebook and talk about these extremely unlikely and unhinged plans just get rounded up and arrested very easily. Let's read the story. It took but before them we months. get started. Head over to timcast.com slash donate Fuck if you'd off, like Tim. to support Holy my work. Shit. Don't know left and considering that they're both particularly dangerous. But if you think I do a good job six men were charged with plotting to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer at her vacation home in reaction to what they viewed as her uncontrolled power, according to a criminal complaint unsealed Thursday in federal court. The men plotted for months, consulting and training with militia members and undertaking rehearsals in August and September. According to the complaint, four of the six men planned to meet Wednesday to, quote, make a payment on explosives and exchange tactical gear, the FBI said in the court filing. The FBI quoted one of the accused as saying Whitmer has no checks and balances at all. Okay. She has uncontrolled power right now. All good things must come to an end. Creepy statements. But they weren't wrong in that regard. She does have uncontrolled power. What? He's literally contradicting himself from just a couple minutes ago. In favor of the right wingers. Oh my God. But they were wrong in that there are checks and balances. When she started... Wait, wait, just listen to what... Just listen to that again. Uncontrolled power. And creepy statements. But they weren't wrong in that regard. She does have uncontrolled power. She does have uncontrolled power. But they were wrong in that there are checks and balances. There are checks and balances. When she literally, literally double think. This is two contradictory statements that he's mushing together. True. Absolutely true. Peak enlightened centrism. Yeah. Right, Windleby? Nah, I highly doubt it. He started enforcing and, and declaring nice. his unconstitutional edict. Lawsuits were filed. She lost. It's the same thing I say about resisting arrest. The, in order for society to function, police need to be able to arrest people. And sometimes they get it wrong and sometimes the cops are bad. But you don't win the fight by fighting with a cop. You don't win the fight by storming the governor's vacation home or whatever. You win in the courts. And they did. They won. And she was like, I don't care what the court says. And the AG says, well, too bad. We will no longer enforce your decree. They won. This plot was insane. The government used informants and undercover agents to thwart the alleged plot. The six men were arrested Wednesday night. This is boring. Let's they don't know how to seven. hide like the left does. Now we have seen what is described as ex right-wing extremism. So basically what he's doing is he's saying the right is dumb and the left is smart. And that's why you should be more scared of the left, even though there's no evidence that the left has any sort of plans to do this sort of thing. But the right explicitly does. But because they got caught, it must be that the left, he's inferring, he's claiming that the left must have plots because they are sneakier. This is f fucking backwards reasoning. Backwards reasoning. In these mass tragic events with, you know, shootings or whatever. And these people are dangerous. I mean, And yes. we have to do what we can to stop them. And that's what the FBI does with informants trying to find out who these people are to prevent this from happening. And when they do thwart it, I'm eternally grateful. Because think about it. 
we've seen some really dramatic and terrifying moments where these lone, I guess you call them right wing extremists. It's hard to describe because, you know, what right wing really means is, is dependent upon who you're talking to. Left wing seems to have a universal understanding. Really? Really? Okay. You enjoy myself. Is it not possible that we need to be more socially tolerant, but our capitalist economic system requires only minor reforms? No. The reason being is that our capitalist system is not functioning right now. Tons and tons and tons of people are dying, and we're exploiting um, entire nations of people for slave labor to make this possible. Our system is not working. The environment is going to be destroyed under capitalism. We need a radical rethinking of our economic system if we want to even live to the end of this century. Capitalism has got to go. We've, we've got to rethink it. It's not helping us. It's killing us. Even among people who are self-described as leftists. But among these extremists, when these mass tragic events happen, everybody wished wishes it was prevented. In this instance, it seems they may have prevented something. That's what? good. I'm not worried. The propensity for things True. like this to happen, the, or I should say the likelihood, is rare. Meanwhile, around day 133 of far-left riots, where they're actually attacking people's homes, how do we stop this if the FBI can't shut them down? The Sun. That was a Sun article, by the way. You know the Sun? as in the right-wing tabloid from the UK, that was a Sun article that he was just citing there, that he just cruised right over. The Sun. The Sun.co.uk. Homes. How do we stop this if the FBI can't shut them down? They can shut this down. I feel safe. If, you know, if a bunch of Proud Boys marched on my property, I'm not worried about them. I've said this before because they're not going to do anything. They're not going to smash my windows. They're not going to get into fights. They're going to walk around. Wait. That's literally what they do. do that, that's, I did an entire research on the Proud Boys. Tim Pool is full of shit. The, the Proud Boys beat three people within an inch of their lives, got arrested, and went to jail for it. And Gavin McInnes had to leave the organization in order to prevent his guys from going to prison for longer. They literally talk about how they go and beat people up. One of the tenets for joining, for moving up higher in the organization is that you have to beat up an, a person who is an Antifa member. That's one of the ways that you move up in their membership, like officially. What the fuck is he talking about? This is just outright lies. Yeah. They flags and leave. Antifa, on the other hand, have already started attacking people's homes. They've actually based on an article in a tabloid. Lee threatened people's lives and in Portland actually killed a guy. Think about that. Antifa didn't kill a guy. A guy killed a guy. And then that guy got summarily executed by the state. Why didn't the FBI stop Michael Reinel, this extremist who was armed in the past? They fucking shot him dead with 30 rounds. What are you fucking talking about? He's dead. He never went to court. What are you fucking talking about, Tim Pool? Walked, stalked a Trump supporter and put two bullets in his chest. Why couldn't they stop that guy? Meanwhile, these guys get stopped. You see why I'm not super concerned about this? Let me put it this way. I am worried that some of these extremists may actually get these plans off. I'm worried that some of these people are plotting even today. But I'm actually kind of confident the FBI can go after him and shut him down as they did. Now, there's an update here. It's not just these six men. They say in an update, Michigan's attorney general has charged seven people with plotting to target law enforcement and attack the state Capitol building. The announcement comes after six others were charged with plotting to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer uh, for what they viewed as uncontrolled power. These other guys are accused of targeting law enforcement. I'm sorry, man. I don't care what your political political alignment is. If you're trying to go after cops and, and kill or, or, or hurt them in any way, you may as well be Antifa. My criticism. What kind of standard is that? If you are going to go after cops, you may as well be Antifa. That his definition 
is Antifa equals evil. So if people kill a cop, they must be Antifa. If you do a terrorism, you must be an Antifa. Holy shit. ...is the same. I am for police reform. I am for law enforcement reform and criminal justice reform across the board. But I think you don't just throw the whole system out. We do not live in a fascist totalitarian dictatorship. I got some news for you, Tim. As exemplified by the fact that people of left and right can be arrested and charged with this. But I do think we have a problem. If wait, it's wait, that's proof? The proof is that left and right people can both be arrested by the police? That's what proves that we don't live in a fascist state? Okay, dude. Okay, dude. Tim Pool's brain is a truly confusing uh, organ very easily the right that gets targeted in the media, targeted by FBI, and the far left keeps doing this over and over and over again. Now, I want to give a shout out to Michael Tracy, who made an interesting point. He said, Michael Tracy, so far, what has been cited is the sun and Michael Tracy. Holy shit. Looks like very elaborate long-term use of numerous FBI informants in that alleged Michigan militia plot. FBI polls entrapment schemes constantly with a wide range of targets from mentally unstable radical Muslim teenagers to purported right wing militia groups. You may want to familiarize yourself with these tactics. This is actually a good point when we consider they used informants to stop the screw. Hey, Dylan Burns. Thank you so very much. Welcome everyone from the Dylan Burns community. We are having a wonderful time going over some Tim Pool videos. And then after that, we're going to dive into talking about Twitter, Twitter toxicity, Twitter drama, all of it. So stick around if you want to see that. We're just at the very tail end of our segment on Tim Pool. 404 gender not found. Thank you for the follow. All of you consider throwing me a follow because if you like political content with a lot of energy and comedy and fun, I'm the one you want to be following. Um, yeah, so shoot us a follow and also consider joining my site. You can sign in on our site, demonmama.com forward slash live with your Twitch account and come hang out. We have tons of awesome emotes and you'll get to appear on the screen. So consider hopping by and getting your username on the Demon Mama site today. It's fun. It's great. And you get to hang out with my awesome community and appear on the screen and use all of our awesome emotes. Like, I mean, seriously, look at all this. Look, look at all these great emotes. You can see them appear on the screen. Look at them right there. Look, they're so cute. There's a million of them. You're ready for the Twitter stuff? We got tons of stuff to talk about on Twitter. But now all I just want to say is welcome very much to, uh, to everyone who just came in from Dylan Burns. Very, very happy to have you. Much love to you, Dylan. Uh, Lijin, have a wonderful day. It was wonderful having you here and have a good time. I hope you have a great night. Let's get right back into it. Let's get back onto this Tim Pool shit. Uh, for all of you who are just getting here, we've been talking about Tim Pool's coverage of the kidnapping of the, uh, the attempted kidnapping of, um, uh, the, the governor of Michigan. This happened like a, like a week ago. Gretchen Whitmer, I think her name is, um, and he spent the first minute saying that it was bad and then has since spent about 10 to 15 minutes. We're about, we're at about 11 minutes in. So he spent one minute talking about how it was bad. And now he spent 11 minutes, um, talking about how the left is actually worse and we shouldn't be afraid because, um, the right got caught and the left is so secretive that they won't get caught. Actually, Nistagam Nistagamus, Nista New York Stagmus, I don't know how to say that name. Not completely, but basically, yes. He's taken a roundabout path to it. Um, he actually denounced them at the beginning, but he spent, he spent the rest of the time saying how nobody should worry about this, and instead they should be worried about leftists and Antifa um, because they're the real terrorists. And um, his citations for that was a tabloid and Michael Tracy's Twitter timeline. Those were his citations. Yeah, he is full Alex Jones at this point. Yeah, they're bad, but you know who's really bad? Whereas all this brains the left has, I have one, or I want some. What the fuck? Why am I left out of the super genius cell? Damn, 
it's too bad. You should join the site chat. Then you will expand your mind by by 20% at least. All right, let's get back into this. Let's get back into it. Got him. Where are the Antifa informants? Serious question. We had that one guy in uh, uh, Tacoma, I believe. Where are the Antifa informants? Hey, maybe it's because Antifa isn't an organization. It's a creed. And people like you keep trying to say that it's an organization, but there isn't an organization. What the fuck are you talking about? There are Antifa organizations, like, for example, Rose City Antifa, which is a specific organization that follows anti-fascist principles, but Antifa is not a single organization. There isn't one. It doesn't exist. And the FBI knows this. Obviously. That's why Antifa isn't on the top of the fucking list like white nationalist groups are, like Nazi groups are. That's ridic That's extremely silly, but I feel you on that thoughtful equality donut. My goodness. Joe got it right that time. I was, I was floored when he said that. Not going to lie. I did not expect him to say that. Firebomb an ICE facility. Why didn't they stop it before it happened? Wait, Where that guy, the guy who firebombed an ICE facility? Do you know that that guy, do you know that that guy, it's funny, that happened really close to me. That guy didn't hurt anyone. No one was harmed in his attack. He went into the facility and he threw a, a shitty firebomb against the wall. It blew up, burned a scorch mark on the wall, and then he got killed. Yeah, he might have burnt a car. That's it. That's why. And it was not premeditated. The guy just got mad one day, made a bomb, and went and did it. That's why. Th that's why. Where are the Antifa informants? Is Antifa really just better organized? Are these right-wing groups just bad at what they do? He can't even he can't even consider the fact that his worldview might be wrong on this. He just literally can't even sit by. He can't understand it. Or could it be that the FBI uses entrapment schemes? Meaning, they seed these these calls to these individuals. They tell them what hey, you, you want to. So he can't even consider that maybe Antifa isn't as bad as these fucking people. Maybe even the existing Antifa organizations that do exist aren't as bad as these people. Instead, he has to imagine that it's actually the, the FBI has a secret bias against right-wing people and uses ant entrapment schemes to convince them to do terror plots? Oh do this hey how about this and when the Damn. guys say yes they arrest oh them on the spot and then they parade them around in media haha -ha, we we stopped the far right i don't know who these guys are all i know is what's being reported they're innocent oh, I until mean, proven will, guilty well there is some level of premeditation to that but not to the same degree that we're talking about here these people had a plan for months to kidnap the 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 governor uh, when you, if you're sitting in your house one day and you freak the fuck out and you slap together a, a firebomb, which you could make in like 20 minutes if you really wanted to, um, yeah, yeah, it's not like they, they didn't have a plan to do this. There weren't multiple people involved. The guy was a single actor who just made a bomb and went and did it. So, I mean, it is technically, it is technically premeditation, but not even close to the same degree. It's like, I did this in my, like, I mean, the same way as like, murder like second degree murder i think it is is like you did it and he like you did it you did the murder but you didn't sit there and make a plan to do it over the course of weeks premeditation refers to like a long period of time where you plan to do something not just any planning involved yeah yeah but if i can easily see a story and there's been other stories where far right groups get get you know get stopped disarmed or arrested why should i be panicking about this why is it that these leftists in media won't talk about Antifa? What do you mean? What the fuck are you talking about? What are you fucking talking about, Tim Pool? Donald Trump must condemn white supremacy. Joe Biden doesn't have to condemn Antifa. He could deny their existence. That is what scares me. That they're going to people's homes. They're attacking them in their home. That Black Lives Matter and Antifa are getting violent. And nothing is done about this.
these people. I almost didn't want to do the segment because I was like, we get it, man. If a right wing group steps out of line in any capacity, be it extremists or whatever, the regular conservatives will get banned. The extremists on the right who are plotting to kidnap a governor will get snatched up immediately. Black lives. The right wingers will get banned. What is he talking about? What the absolute fuck? Like, literally, this is just drivel. He's just something is going on up in here and no one in the audience can understand it. This is the Trump shit. This is where he's speaking directly to bias right here. That's what he's doing. He's speaking directly to bias. Matter Antifa? Nope, they'll get cut loose over and over and over again. Now, I want to be fair and say there's real reason to believe that Gretchen Whitmer was abusing her power. I believe she was. The court ruled as such. Michigan Supreme Court rules against governor's emergency okay. powers. Okay. After high court decision, Michigan AG will not enforce COVID orders. Okay. See, Gretchen Whitmer was even trying to defy the courts after they said her orders were unconstitutional. She said, yeah, well, I have 21 days before it goes into effect, which is technically not true. My understanding is that she has 21 days. Look at how far he has to reach. Look at how far he has to reach in order to make it seem like this was justified. This is still him trying to not explicitly justify, but still justify. 14 minutes, sorry, 13 minutes defending the right wing, one minute disavowing them. To challenge One minute the disavowing, if 13 minutes. If she was just like, I'm not going to challenge it, but I'm more or less keep defending doing this for 21 days. That's an abuse of power, in my opinion. And that's scary. The fact that we are experiencing this level of lawlessness I lie. and tyrannical behavior I Nick, from these Nick Democrat Krish. governors, in my opinion, is very terrifying. There's not enough boost. For so this I'm shit. not True. surprised that you see stories of right wing groups saying something has to be done about it. But I'll tell you this. It's I'm wrong. not. Listen, it, listen to this. He's just making apology for terror attacks. He's just trying to hide it. Jesus fucking Christ. It was wrong. It was a mistake. No, and I'm you're telling good, you, Krish. you I'm gotta just, be just calm and de-escalate. Thanks for the follow. Thought Trump the declares donut. court ruling on Whitmer's emergency powers a big win. Yeah, I'm not saying it's good, but what do you expect? And Trump was winning. Okay, now, let donut. Me, let, let me just add. Thank you. I think the, the more hardcore libertarian types, they don't like Trump either. So, okay, hey, fine. Have Maybe fun, it's not Ace. a perfect Enjoy your argument. Weed. But weed. there's a lot of right-wing groups that view Whitmer as a tyrant. But Trump is is dancing. De declaring a victory. Her, her, her unconstitutional edicts were struck down and the AG abandoned soon, her. Trump declares victory. Also in Pennsylvania, Trump seizes on judges ruling that Pennsylvania lockdown is unconstitutional. <laughs> if you just chill, you might actually win the hearts and minds of the people. We are dealing with fourth generational warfare. Clever no, tactics from not Antifa. Simp. It's not, it's not as bad for you. There's a lot, there's significantly less chemicals in weed than there is in cigarettes. Also, um, weed is significantly less, uh, chemically addictive than nicotine and nicotine itself is incredibly harmful to your lungs. It's still not good for you. Mind you, it's not good for your lungs, but it's not nearly as bad as cigarettes. Not even close. They know not to escalate to the point where these it's men much did less because they know yeah. it will shock the nations uh, to their, they'll, it'll shock Americans. It'll scare them. It'll be used as propaganda by the left to claim the far right is the real threat. No, the, the, these people were bumbling. The Wait, what he's shown in this entire video is that the, the far right is the real threat. He's never made an argument otherwise. He's never actually made a convincing one. Foons who got caught. And that's what happened. Lol. And sometimes these nice people try, don't, Sam. and it's a problem, but the FBI easily shuts them down. Antifa knows if they keep their terrorism to a low tier, they'll get away with it. And what that means is, yeah, throw a rock through a window. No one's going to launch a national news story, and there's not going to be a major news cycle because of it. This story yes, because it's a rock through a window, not the kidnapping of a governor of a state. Obviously. Obviously. What, what do you mean? What is he fucking? This is just unbelievable. How does anybody watch this shit? Do people just turn their brains off while they're watching this? Well, simp, we have to, right? Again, 500,000 views. True, Busy B. True, join the chat. Join the, t the website chat. It's much more fun. 13 people. Fair, simp. Oh, it's, it's, it's fire. It's popping off on Twitter. Because it's scary. But Antifa. Yes, Tim. Yes. A kidnapping attempt against the governor of the state that almost succeeds 
is scary. And it's scarier than some random fuckhead throwing a rock through a window somewhere in fucking Minnesota. 133 days of riding? Wow. We're done soon. Don't worry. Not scary enough, I guess, because they draw it out. They'll threaten you. They'll burn down your business. They will tell you they're coming for you. But it's not scary enough. A blunt object is not as scary as a gun. So when the extremist groups on the right say a broken window is not as scary as 13 people attempting to kill the governor of a state. Yes, Tim. Correct. Or, you know, or whatever you want to call it, say they're going to strike. That's scary because they will strike like a precision scalpel, whereas Antifa will strike like a blunt object. We just had yes, he is. National Quark. Guard units put on standby ahead of possible civil unrest this fall. What is this evidence of? Hey, he finally did something other than Fox News. He cited the Hill. In two states, in Minneapolis and uh, Minnesota, and in, because of Wauwatosa, because of Minneapolis, and because of Wauwatosa, Michigan. I'm sorry. Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. The National Guard. I mean, was that's fair, deployed. Nick, Nick Krish, that's And now true. they are putting National Guard on standby because of the far left. Let me just reiterate one more time. I'll read the story. Don't you get it? The, these, the, the, the right wing extremists, the far right, they get shut down like that. Not always, but enough. I'm not worried. This is not saying what he thinks it's saying. He. I, I'm stunned. Holy motherfucking shit. Th this is saying the opposite of what he's saying. He's saying, oh, the, the, the government, the government is able to shut down the right wingers because they're dumb and stupid. But the government has to use the National Guard to shut down. It has to use the federal powers of the National Guard under the orders of Trump to shut down protest from the left because they're so powerful. That's fine, Grime Dango. We're about to move off of it. I, I get you. I understand. Don't worry about it. I'm not worried about right-wing people coming to my homes. My, my, uh, to my house. I'm worried. To my homes. Whoops. Slipped up there, little Tim Pool. All right. I think we've seen enough of this. We, we've seen enough of this. Have we not? Have we not seen enough of this? I think we've seen enough of Tim Pool for a day. This is ridiculous. He's very self-conscious about his balding. Which, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. <sighs> oh, by the way, just so you know. Just so you know, when we're talking about right-wing violence, this is an interesting article you might want to read at some point. Just, just so you know. Yeah, just so you know. This is a guy who's been involved for some time. Yeah. He's uh he's got a a militia movement going in case things don't go their way in November. Just so you know. Just so you know.